Hey everybody, good evening and welcome to the role of play from the Virginia Tech University Libraries. Uh, tonight we are going to play a one-shot adventure of Dungeons and Dragons that is uh, vaguely inspired by the first collection of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes stories titled The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes and potentially a little bit from the novel The Hound of the Baskervilles. Um, I say vaguely because as your DM for this evening, I pulled some ele elements from these stories. I've run a bit wild uh, and I will hint at some other things. And some of it, of course, will also depend on some dice rolls and what happens uh, on our adventure. So I am calling tonight's adventure uh, the adventure of the artifact heists. And in just a moment, I will have our players introduce themselves. For those of you who are not familiar with me, even though I live on this stream, it feels like <laughs> my name is Kira Dietz. I use she, her pronouns. I am the assistant director of special collections and university archives. Um, I love to think about play and how it overlaps with my work and the way I interact with people. I spend quite a fair amount of time role playing, um, especially around 5e D&D, which is what our adventure is tonight. I've run some games of Honey Heist and uh, probably played in some other stuff as well, but nobody wants to hear from me because uh, you're going to hear my voice a lot tonight. And then um, I picked these stories because I am a huge fan of Sherlock Holmes. I'm a huge thing, fan of all things Victorian. Um, and I wanted to see what would happen if we tried to mash them up with the traditional magic and fantasy of D&D 5e. So I will go around and have our players introduce themselves. I'll uh, just randomly go in the order that people are on my screen. So I will uh, make Jeff go first. <laughs> oh, great, 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 great. <laughs> so good evening. Uh, my name is Jeff Pedersen and my pronouns are he, him. Uh, I actually am not officially attached to Virginia Tech. I'm actually a high school history teacher at Blacksburg High School, although I am a tech alum. I got my teaching degree a few years ago, and I actually did work in the library for like two months. Um, when we talk about play, when, when I think about play, I think it actually it's a really important part of my job as a teacher. Um, I'm best known as the guy who does those crazy activities with his students, um, and I'm constantly asking my students to play. Uh, not in the sense of games, though that happens, like it happened today, we were playing some review games, but more in the sense of experiment. Let's try something new. Let's uh, do something that might make you feel a little uncomfortable. Um, and sometimes as part of that play, I ask my students to actually role play. So um, one thing that we did was we researched historical people and pretended that uh, Peter the Great and Togawa Yashu were meeting and talking about the best ways to govern the world, or pretending you're a merchant in the Indian Ocean, um, or playing a high school student in a murder mystery game. Uh, so there's a lot of play involved, a lot of role play. For, for myself, I'm sort of like been on the periphery of D&D. &D. Um, I've played a couple campaigns that like petered out after like three sessions. Um, I did a, a Star Wars RPG that lasted one session. Um, and I have memories of character building. I love building characters. So, And as for me and Sherlock Holmes, <clears throat> honestly, I, I've read The Hound. I've read a few of, few of the adventures. But mostly it's the secondary sources that um, have gotten me into homes, like watching uh, Sherlock or watching Sherlock Holmes with Downey Jr. Or, you know, Basil in The Great Mouse Detective. <laughs> or my favorite TV <laughs> Holmes is Gregory House from House. Um, and my favorite book, actually, I come with props. Ooh. Uh, one of my favorite Sherlock Holmes books is actually Michael Chabon's The Final Solution. So, um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Should so, I, I guess just tell us about your, your character real sure. quick. Sure. Okay, so. <laughs> sorry, I'm talking. Uh, so tonight I'm going to be playing Lies Heim. Uh, everybody just calls him Ash. His pronouns are he and him. Uh, Ash is a half-elfin rogue wizard. He's sort of reserved, 
almost an aristocratic air about him, uh, although his seven o'clock shadow um, and his curly hair gives him a little of a disheveled look. Um, the other odd thing about him is he has this really heavy duster. Um, so sort of think uh, Dresden Files. So Anyway, that's me. Okay, Alex, you're up. Nice. Hello, everyone. I am Alex Kinneman. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I am the Digital Preservation Coordinator at the libraries. Uh, the title sounds way cooler than what I actually do, but I like saying it. Um, so I, I used to play quite a bit of second edition D&D &D in uh, undergrad, uh, back when Thacos were a thing and, you know, made everything so much more complicated. And this is my very first uh, 5e game, so bear with me as I figure out what on earth I'm doing. Uh, otherwise, play in my life is mostly tabletop games. Uh, my partner and I play a lot of tabletop games and a lot of, like, PvP combat games. Uh, I am not a gamer, but I do love my tabletop games. Um, I have played in Honey Heist before uh, on this Twitch stream. Loved it. Uh, so I came back for this, and uh, as I said, I've only I've only played Second Ed and a little Changeling. So this this will be an adventure. And my experience with Sherlock Holmes. Uh, so I did. Uh, brush up on my Sherlock Holmes for this event specifically um, under the order cough of uh, our lovely DM uh, but I had previously read The Hound but it's been ages ages so I kind of just worked my way back in and got back into the vibe of Holmes life and I also was going to shout out The Great Mouse Detective that is Vincent Price's best role is as Radigan. So I, I'm a huge, huge fan of that. And I think that might've been my first uh, experience with Sherlock Holmes and the concept of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, so today I am playing Elena. Uh, her pronouns are also she, her. She is a dissipator tiefling. Uh, so she hails from the city of Dis, which is in Hell's second lair. And she's also an excellent spy because of where she comes from. She is an artificer, so uh, if those not familiar, basically an inventor, but with magic. Um, she's pretty naturally suspicious, um, doesn't really warm up to people very well, um, and follows her own code of conduct. She's very lawful, but like to her own law, which uh, makes her a little maybe inconsistent to other people, but to herself, she's like totally doing everything she knows she's supposed to be doing. Um, she doesn't really like people all that much, but she really values life and like information sharing and intelligence, but mostly for her own gain. Uh, she's uh, black hair, very pale with purple eyes, and of course the uh, tiefling horns. So the classic tieflings. naturally, <laughs> and the tail. I I do love tieflings. They're just they're so cute. Oh, I shouldn't say that. They're from hell. <laughs> I mean, they can be. <laughs> I'm pretending she is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, Jen, why don't you tell us about you and who you're going to play tonight? Yeah. Um, my name's Jen. My pronouns are she or her. I am a senior at Virginia Tech majoring in business information technology. Um, play for as it applies in my life, at least. I'm not super... Just to be frank, I have no experience at all in D&D. I have no idea what I'm doing here. Um, so hopefully it goes well. And if I'm a little bit slow on what's going on, I apologize beforehand. But basically, um, I've been into a lot of um, cosplaying before. So I have a little bit of experience, I would say, into like personifying into like characters and like, you know, because I like them so much. Um, so experiencing role play is very, very minimal. So sorry if I'm a little bit, you know, trying to keep up as much as I can. But with the experience of work of literature, so Sherlock Holmes, I was a huge, huge fan back in high school of the Sherlock Holmes series um, from BBC uh, with Benedict Cumberbatch. I was a huge, huge fan. So I'm a little bit um, familiar with that kind of aspect of it. So... Because it's my first time playing D&D, &D, I kept my character super, super basic, I guess, because I didn't know what I was doing. 
Um, her name is Jesswin. She also goes as she and her pronoun. She is a human race. Um, and her class is a rogue. I imagine her to be more like myself since I didn't really have anything to base it on since it's my first time. So I thought of her as more of a scrappy person. She likes to do what she wants to do. Um, she likes to cause trouble. And yeah, I think that's what I can say about her. <laughs> Great. Awesome. And uh, last but certainly not least, Nathaniel. Hey, I'm Nathaniel Porter. My pronouns are he or him. Uh, I am the social science data consultant and data education coordinator uh, in the BT libraries. Uh, basically, that means I help people work with data about people, whether that's surveys, whether that's interviews, whether that's Facebook scrape data, Amazon reviews, all kinds of things. Um, I teach it and I help people one on one. <coughs> um, play is actually a big reason why I'm in the job I'm in. Uh, my background is in sociology, but instead of becoming like a professor and whatever, I work in the libraries because it means I get to play with all kinds of cool data about things I would never possibly study myself because I can't be experts in all of them. So just some recent examples, I've worked with data on kidney donation, cybersecurity, and interpreting the facial expressions of piglets. Um, and helped people with that just recently. Um, so I love to play with data. I love to teach people how to play with data. Um, I also like games a lot. Um, as far as role playing, um, I've played and DM'd a little bit of Fifth Edition and Doctor Who, um, as well as long, long in the past played some Shadowrun. Um, I do love me some fantasy cyberpunk, but that is not today, I guess. <laughs> Um, uh, I do, I've mostly done uh, trading card games and board games until recently though. Um, and just for fun in my spare time, I'm also working on a couple projects with 5th edition, including a research project on analyzing racial typecasting because I like data and I have data. So um, yeah, uh, my character is Rocky. He is, uh, his pronouns are he, him. Uh, his, Rocky is his nickname, uh, but Nobody knows his real name. He's an Earth Ganazi. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Ganazi, they're part uh, mortal, part elemental, or jinn. And so he, um, his parents abandoned him because they were shamed uh, in the ruins of Neverwinter, where he grew up, um, just sort of surviving on what he could find, learned to keep calm and quiet uh, and listen. Um, the ruins were a great place for him because he could sort of blend in. His skin is um, uh, sort of a dusty brown with like pebble-sized goosebumps that look like craggy rocks. Um, so he's very identifiably Ganazi. Uh, he's a barbarian. Um, so he generally is very calm and collected and observes a lot. But when someone attacks him or someone he cares about, or threatens the uh, the threatens to corrupt the land. For example, a demonic influence, something like that. Uh, he can uh, fly into a great rage and be extremely powerful. Uh, he's also slow to speak and slow to trust. Uh, he's not really allied to any particular force except for the earth. Okay, so that is our party for this evening. Um, with all of that in mind, um, unless y'all have questions, we can start this game. <laughs> all right, go. everybody's ready. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's go. go. So for those of you who are viewing and for our players, I'm going to do a quick refresher on um, the scenario in as far as I gave it to you, and then I will give you a little bit more uh, information, and then we can kind of go from there. So the members in your party of adventures are, in fact, at least somewhat acquainted with each other. You all work when it suits you for an adventurer's guild out of Neverwinter, and you've all worked together at least once in the past. Uh, word has reached you, you'll find out how in just a moment, of a rather significant contract, one that, depending on your motivations, uh, could earn you a hefty amount of gold. 
It could earn you a favor from some nobility. It could be a chance to right a wrong or capture someone who's an evildoer. Uh, it could be an opportunity to learn about some mysterious items or a combination of all of these. Lord Keegan Rivergleam, a Neverwinter noble, is a known collector of historical artifacts and curiosities. His collection is not open to just anyone to wander in and look. He has strict policies on who is allowed to visit his self-proclaimed gallery of gizmos. And yet, between the limited details of this contract and the rumors in the city, pieces of Lord River Gleam's collection have been disappearing. He tried to keep it quiet, hoping to retrieve his losses before anyone caught wind, but his own resources have been able, unable to return a single item and more have gone missing, forcing him to seek professional assistance elsewhere. Whatever your reasons for pursuing this job, the four of you have convened at the Guild Hall. Knowing that you're all acquainted, the mercenary guildmaster, an older dwarf woman named Nestra Stormbreaker, has called you all in. She thinks, at least, that this seems like the kind of job you might take on together, if it, you can figure out what it is you're supposed to be doing. Rivergleam has been vague on the details of the terms of the contract, and Nestra is annoyed, and not just because it seems unclear about what her own cut will be. She tells you that she has no patience for these nobles and their secrecy and nonsense. And the contract is basically just a note, which she waves in your, ha in your face, perhaps in hopes of winning some sympathy at her annoyance. Stormbreaker. Items have been stolen, desirous to have them back. Will pay well in gold, or reasonable, which is bold and underlined, favors. Don't waste my time with unskilled adventurers, and don't give the details to anyone who doesn't need them. Send possibles directly to me. Rivergleam. So she waves this note in your face, uh, and she gives you the location of River Gleam's estate in Neverwinter proper, and reminds you to remind him that she gets her payment if you don't all die. <laughs> Before you leave, she sends you to the stores, being that you are guild members, as a courtesy, and each of you gets a potion of healing. The guild quartermaster, a halfling named Hallos, who has heard N Nesra's grumbling, hands you one extra with a wink and a shushing gesture. No idea what that River Gleam has in store for you. So, River Gleam Manor is a, a short walk from the Guild Hall on a sunny morning. What would you like to do? <laughs> we already got our potions and our assignment. Yes, you have your assignment. Everyone has a single potion of healing and you have one extra. Someone should hold on to and Maybe you should know who has that. <laughs> who wants the extra? I'll take the extra. <laughs> okay. Can carry quite a bit. Well, Ash is going to start walking. He's got a little bit of a cane going, and he just kind of has a stroll with purpose. Okay. Is everyone following along? Or is Ash going on this adventure alone? <laughs> no. That's fine with me. That's fine with me. Elena's I can get paid. <laughs> so, uh, as I said, River Gleam Manor is a reasonable walk from the guild hall. Uh, although you suppose that Nesra could have sent word ahead, she didn't indicate that she would, making the appearance of Lord Keegan ever R River Gleam himself at the front door a bit surprising. Uh, he's an older human man, graying at the temples, and he's dressed in white and ocean blue. He gives you all a once-over, pauses, nods, and seems to invite you in. There is a comfy library with chairs, tea, and some pastries. You're all invited to sit, and after another moment or two of silent study, he nods, and he says, I think you're bound to have some success at least, and certainly a little is better than none. I suppose I should tell you more? Whether you know it or not, he tells you, he's a wizard with an expertise in divination and a fondness for stories. His magic, over the last few years, he says, has been showing him gateways into what he calls other realities, although you're maybe not 100% sure what this means, uh, and other places, including one where the stories of a unique detective by the name of Sherlock Holmes solve crimes in a place he calls London. If you don't stop him, he begins to describe a rainy, gray city choked with smoke and clattering with carriages, a huge building made of iron and glass, an ornate palace for a queen named Victoria, strange weapons with tubes and trigger that fire, triggers that fire small bits of metal, and on and on. This sounds, to some extent, like nonsense, but magic, as many of you know, can be nonsensical and do nonsensical things. 
Over time, he explains that he's followed Holmes closely, learning to travel briefly and acquire items relating to these adventures. In bringing them to the material plane, however, they have taken on some of the magic of this place, manifesting as rare items and becoming a valuable and dangerous collection. His, quote, gallery of gizmos, which he finally offers to show you. He leads you through the house further in, talking all the while. To be perfectly honest, I'm not all that concerned about the who or even the how. I want to know about the why, why they were taken and why they've been scattered. And I want my collection back, which is where you come in, returning things. They really shouldn't be floating around out there, and once I have them back, well, security's going to get tougher around here. He eyes you all again. We can talk about that if, if you make it back. So he takes you to a large room that almost resembles a small museum, uh, and I presume you wish to wander around. He seems to gesture and give you the opportunity to do so. Absolutely. <laughs> In fact, Ash is looking on the way there just to, to kind of like see what he sees. Uh, on the way there, you pass through the, the ground floor of the mansion, so there are doors that are closed. You're basically walking through a central hallway. Uh, none of them appear to be open, so you're not quite sure what's on the other side. Um, the walls in here are decorated with paintings. They vaguely resemble him. You might suspect that they are um, family members or, you know, uh, ancestors. Um, but when he gets to this room, uh, you see two guards standing outside of it. It's a set of double doors, and he opens it and reveals to the, the this museum type space um if you take a few minutes to walk around which he seems to be willing to allow you to do which is a rare indeed a rare experience indeed you see strange collections of items on pedestals including some empty pedestals as well uh in one you see uh, across the top of one you see a walking stick with a strange black quote coating and a bone ring set into it uh, at the far end of the room, there's a violin, and when you get close to it, it begins to produce music on its own. You see an odd collection of five seeds, bright orange in color. You see a piece of what appears to be wallpaper with a word scrambled, scrawled across it in red, but in a language that none of you, not even Ash, can understand. Uh, <laughs> You see a box made of a strange material. You see some piles of gems or gold. Um, but there are empty, so there are pedestals scattered throughout and empty pedestals throughout this room where individual items seem to be missing. And after a few moments of letting you sort of wander, uh, he sort of draws your attention again. And he says, I, I won't send you out there empty handed. Uh, I haven't recovered anything, but I've been working on something that I think will help. I'm not quite sure that any of you have mastered planar travel. And he says this with a hint of humor, but perhaps a note of condescension as well. Uh, he eyes you all, and uh, let me roll a dice here. It's going to determine something for me, because I like to leave it up to the dice, too. So he eyes you all, and he hands Ash an amulet. Uh, he says, it's an amulet of the plains, sort of. I've done some work on it, and it should take you to one of my missing items. I'm not really sure which one, uh, but it should get you there or at least near enough to show you the way. Um, and from there, it'll take you to another, after you find it. Uh, or maybe back here. At any rate, I don't expect you to get them all in one go. Uh, odds are you'll show up here eventually, and we can check in on the situation then. Just sort of concentrate on the amulet, and it'll do the teleportation part. And he sort of looks at you expectantly. Okay, well, like I'm, he's... <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, first of all, I'm just gonna look at it. And... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, um, well, if you want to, you can go ahead and roll an Arcana check. Okay, Arcana First check. roll of the game yes. that isn't me. <laughs> okay, here we go. Arcana check. It is uh, a nine. Come a on, nine. boo. <laughs> um, you believe him when he says it's an amulet of the plains, that he, it looks like things that you've heard of existing. Um, you don't know, you have no idea what he's done to it. You can only hope that what he said is true, that, that it will take you to one of his missing items, uh, or near one of his missing items, uh, and, and hope that it does what he says, or bring you back here, should it be necessary. <laughs> okay, uh, go ahead. Well, he's doing that. Can I do a perception check and look around the room, sort of focusing on the empty pedestals in the areas nearby? 
Uh, yeah, go ahead. And just to confirm, he's, he said you think about it, and it's supposed to take you there. Yes. Mechanically speaking, it takes an action to use this item. <laughs> and if you concentrate on the amulet, he is telling you it should take you to a nearby location to one of his missing items, wherever that happens to be. At this point, um, he would also, you would notice, um, let's see, let me see. With that perception roll, Rocky, and even you, was a 15, yes. You notice there are seven empty pedestals in this room. Um, nothing, there's nothing unique to their placement per se. There's no obvious pattern to where the missing items are. It does in fact seem pretty random. Uh, but from what you can tell, there are seven empty pedestals, which would suggest that there are seven missing items at this point in time. But there's nothing noticeable about them. They're just empty. Sometimes they still have a uh, something that might be holding something. So in one case, you see a pillow with nothing on it. Uh, in one case, you see a um, what looks like the sort of uh, a round neck and shoulders of a person with nothing on it, like it might hold a necklace or something that it doesn't hold now um but the items themselves are just gone so while this is happening uh, i i elena is going to ask ash if she can also check out the amulets um fiddling with magic is kind of one of her hobbies so uh she'd like to kind of see and then um you do an arcana check as well you can yes ash holds it out but he still is holding it he's not <laughs> willing to get rid of it he's not willing to depart hand it he's over he's not willing to part with it yeah <laughs> all right got a 16. Ooh. so yeah you uh, you have a, a little understanding of magic elena but river gleams magic is still far above and beyond your understanding so you 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 understand what he's saying. You understand that this necklace will take all of you somewhere. Um, you don't know exactly what he's done to it to make it so that it can attune to an object and not just a plane. You know that this is a thing that normally just takes you to another plane, another location. Um, he has done something, but you're not quite sure on the specifics as to attune it to some element of these missing items. Okay. I, I let... So he... Yeah, so he definitely, he, he believes and that this will take you near an item. Um, and he sees you all looking at it, and he, he kind of expected you would already be gone by now and the fact that you're still sitting here looking at things. And he says, oh, um, yeah, when you get there, it, it'll get warmer when you get closer. So and that's Ash is going to do a quick look around and find one of those empty locations. Mm -hmm. Uh, you mentioned some distinguishing features, like like an empty, like a a bust, essentially. Yeah. So um, yes. So in one case, there is like it looks like a bust without a head, so it's just the neck and shoulders um, that you presume would have had something on a chain on it that is not there now. Um, so Ash is going to focus on that and mm -hmm. think about like an object that might be tied to that. And that's what he's going to focus on. All right. So as you think about this, Ash, uh, go ahead and roll a d8. This is not a skill check or anything. Right, you should just be able to pull yeah, yeah. up a d8 yeah. from the corner of your screen. Yep. 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 For those of you who are watching, we are using the game log dice roller in D&D Beyond right now. So we don't have it set up to share with you all, which is why we will try to do a good job of announcing our roles. That um, is a six. That is a six. Okay. Um, there is a moment where all of you are standing there uh, in this room, and you're sort of near each other, but you're sort of, you know, looking at various things. You've been asking questions. Uh, and then there is a bright flash of saffron and orange and goldish light. Uh, and you find that you are no longer standing in the gallery of gizmos belonging to Lord Keegan Rivergleam. You are standing in a hallway of what appears to be a stone building. Um, the walls are undecorated except for occasional torches. Um, and you hear footsteps around, uh, kind of off in the distance around a corner. 
Um, there are some windows off to your left and you see some sunlight coming in. Um, it appears to be daytime wherever you are. Um, and the weather outside seems a little windy or breezy here, but you can't really tell a lot. There is glass between you and it. Uh, and beyond this window, if you look out, you see uh, orchards that are perfectly aligned, reaching off into the distance. Um, but you are standing in a hallway, and you hear footsteps uh, around a corner ahead of you. Ash is going to... Ash, you immediately realize that the amulet in your hand feels warmer than it did okay. when you were standing in the gallery. Well, I'm going to try to uh, quickly put it on and actually hide it. Okay. So then it feels warm against your skin. <laughs> All right, so we're looking around. I'm going to look around for a place to hide in case the people come our direction. Okay. Um, let's see. I, I guess go ahead and make a perception check. Uh, you're kind of in an open hallway. I'm not sure there's going to be a whole lot to hide behind. But <laughs> So while he does that, I'm going to take, Ash is going to take a step forward and see if he notices any difference in temperature <laughs> okay um rocky you look around there is you are a particularly large creature there is not really anything for you look at and there there there's you realize now that there is like a tapestry on the wall in front of you i mean you could hide behind that but everybody's gonna see the bottom half of you sticking out if you choose to, to duck behind it that is your call uh ash you took a step forward like down the hallway or? yeah i'm gonna take like a step forward and see if i notice any difference in temperature um okay and i'll do that through the for the cardinal directions okay as you take two steps down the hallway in the direction that you happen to be facing when you appear where you appear uh you you notice it gets slightly warmer okay can we hear what direction so that seems to have been true um you're in a hallway, let's say, facing north. Oh, no. Can we tell what direction the footsteps are coming from, or do we need to roll perception? Oh, they are coming from this hallway. They're ahead of you, about 20 feet or so. There is a right turn, uh, and you hear feet on the in that hallway around the corner. And you're, you're starting to hear voices. Um, i got to check character sheets real quick. Uh... For the moment, none of you... Well, it's still murmuring at this point, so... Well, I'm going to tell everybody that it, that it's that way, but then I'm going to hide. Okay. Um, those of you who want to hide, go ahead and roll stealth checks. This is going to be pretty high because you're not a lot of options here. <laughs> Can I actually... I'm going to go ahead and uh, cast Pass Without Trace. Okay. So you can do that. That will uh, hide all of us with a plus 10 bonus to stealth checks, and we can't be tracked, and we leave no tracks for okay. up to an hour of concentration. Right. So Rocky gestures, and even though it doesn't seem possible, you all seem to be almost shrouded against the wall that you're next to. Um kind of it doesn't seem it seems like you shouldn't be able to hide here but for some reason you can um so as you are you just staying put are you going to attempt to move i say we walk slowly and quietly forward where well okay do we know where we're headed straight ahead <laughs> all right <laughs> So, um, go ahead and everybody roll stealth checks, and uh, you will get plus 10 to this because of uh, Rocky's help. So close. <laughs> Almost. Almost. Yeah. So, so we have, a, a, with these plus 10s for our viewers, we have a 20, a 21, a 20, and a 29. <laughs> So as you are creeping down this hallway, um, you see, uh, and again, for some reason, almost don't notice you, uh, two dwarves uh, and something large and sort of amorphous that is a cloud of wind, for lack of a better word. 
uh, appear at the intersection and they seem to be looking around somewhat frantically. Uh, so they are, both of the dwarves are carrying, um, they're in armor and they do seem to both be carrying weapons. They're both carrying spears, but they're not using them offensively at this point. They're just carrying them. They're just looking around confused. Can I cast detect thoughts? Does that? Can you? Do you have that I do. I do have that spell. (laughs) Okay. Let me figure out what it is. Um, cast the spell. Actually, do, 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 do. Um, sure. So, uh, Elena is going to cast detect thoughts. Uh, you gesture and there's a pause and you, even though, um, they were speaking to each other in a language that none of you understood. Um, but what happens is, uh, you, for some reason, are suddenly able to understand that they are both concerned the large wind type creature doesn't emit thoughts per se so there's nothing to get there Uh, but the two dwarves basically are like she's very upset about things being out of order we have to figure out where it is we have to fix this okay and i say nothing uh just because we are sneaky sneaking away yep (laughs) i will remember this to tell everyone later uh, so if you do nothing, they will, for the moment, seem to pass by you and head down the hallway that you have just come down. As they walk by, do we notice anything other than the shields on their persons? Um, you notice that they're both wearing armor, and there is a symbol on their sort of shoulder plate. They're wearing, they're wearing chain mail, but there's a symbol on the shoulder plate. Um that you well go ahead and roll an intelligence check maybe you can figure out where you are (laughs) okay that's a 23 23 uh so you don't have a whole lot to go on here ash but you are starting to piece things together with the sort of intuitive mind that you have um and you know that River Gleam has told you you will be plane hopping and you sort of rack your brain through what you know and you, if you had to guess, uh, you suspect you are in Arcadia. Um, this is a place uh, where everything works for good and, and that which is sort of uh, harmonious. Um, so you, uh, you're not, you know that this place is uh, sort of governed by several demigods, each of whom has a castle. Uh, and you suspect that perhaps you are in one of those castles right now, um, you probably are in the Castle of the Wind Queen based on the symbol that you have seen and the wind that you have seen outside. Um, but yeah. How far away are they now? Um, while you did this, they've probably moved about 60 or 70 feet past you down the hallway. Okay. So once they're out of earshot, I will uh, still very quietly tell them my thoughts where we are okay and i will quietly tell them the thoughts of the people that passed us which uh seems to corroborate what ash has told us meantime i would say okay let's let's go it's this way and i'll point in the direction and okay uh well i would say we want to continue to move rather stealthily okay well you see no one else in this hallway um these these dwarves and this this air creature um which uh i think with your 23 you would now realize ash is an air elemental Um, have passed you by and gone the other way. This hallway ahead of you um, does not have external windows. It it is turning inward to the castle now. Um, And before you, you see a hallway, uh, a long stone hallway, with um, probably about 60 feet down a set of doors on either side. 
Um, it is lit in here, so um, whether or not you have dark vision, y'all can see pretty well. Uh, another 60 to 80 feet past that, there is another set of doors, one on either side of the hallway. Um, and you're not quite sure further than that yet. Okay, as we are moving, I, I assume that uh, it's continuing to get warmer and warmer. Indeed. As you walk down the hallway, the pendant is getting warmer and warmer. Uh, and as you come to the doors, the first set of doors, about 60 feet down, uh, the door on your right, um, as you're passing it, it the it's almost too hot now that you're wearing it against yourself. It's it's become uncomfortably warm. Okay. I'll, I'm going to stop and kind of like point in the direction. In the meantime, I'll take it off. Mm -hmm. But I'm still going to kind of like keep it close. Uh, I'll like hide it inside my duster. Okay. Can um, I use magic awareness? Okay. To, uh, let's see. I know the location of any spell or magic within 60 feet. Okay. Uh, that isn't behind oh, total that isn't cover. Oh, total cover. Maybe I should not. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to treat total cover as the same kind of rules for detect magic. Because um, I think that's essentially what the closest mechanism to All this right, is. Yeah. Um, so you are aware that on the other side of this door, there are magic items. Uh, probably many of them. More than uh, you're, you're looking for something. Um, you suspect there are many things. Um, and in fact, you, because this actually tells you what school of magic it belongs to. So, uh, but it's hard to differentiate because there are, are a number of things on the other side of that wall and you are recognizing many different schools of magic. Okay, uh, I'm going to walk up to the door and check for a lock. Uh, the door is locked. Okay. There is a keyhole. Um, it is a set of double doors with handles. Um, there is a, and they are locked. Uh, I am going to turn to Jeswin and sort of like indicate to her to see if she wants to take a crack. Uh, yeah, so actually in my equipment I have a set of lock picking tools, hopefully, um, and I take a crack at it and I hear a click and hopefully that's some good news. <laughs> <laughs> um, go ahead and roll a uh, sleight of hand check for me, a dex check with mm -hmm. those. And that is 15. Oh, 15. Okay, so uh, you do in fact hear a click. Um, whatever the security is on these doors, man, these people might need to work on that. Uh, <laughs> but you have very deft fingers, and you hear the lock pop. Um, and if you wish to, you can open this door. Um, I think we're good to go, so I s put my hand on the handle and crack it open as fast as I can. Okay. <laughs> um, if you open these doors, um, you open the door on the right, there's, like I said, it's a set of double doors, and in front of you, you see what is essentially a treasure room. Um, there are stacks of chests in different places. There are, um, some of them are open and you can see things like bolts of cloth or coins flowing out of them. Uh, you can see pieces of jewelry. You can see um, things that look like um, rods or wands. You can see various magic items. This is, this is quite a treasure trove of someone's that you have uh, just let yourselves into. <laughs> I'm going to move through the door and get inside, so in case anybody okay. else comes, we can... I'll be on the right side of the door. <laughs> so everybody goes in. Are you closing the door behind you, or are you putting yourselves in I'll, this room? Or I'll be the last one in, just kind of like keeping an eye on the, the hallway, and then, yeah, I will close the door. Okay. Uh... Okay, so you are closed in this treasure room. <laughs> For the moment, undetected. Um, I will ask Ash if the pendant is maybe pulsing or giving a sign that the treasure might be in this room any closer. Uh, we are maybe, you know, holding it out to see if it can guide us like a GPS sort of thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. start walking around the room and, you know, warmer, warmer, warmer kind of Dousing thing. With it. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, so you something. So you, you so to this point, you're like, OK, I've been getting closer. It's been getting warmer. Um, you find that there's a moment where you get close to where you think it couldn't get too much hotter. And then all of a sudden it gets cold. And if you change direction and start following maybe where it gets warmer, you find that it gets warmer. And then as you get close, it gets colder again. So you're not quite sure what's going on. All of you go ahead and roll an investigation check. Okay, so we got an 8 from Rocky, a 9 from Jeswin, a 21 from Ash, and a 7 from Elena. So some of you are very distracted because there are many, many exciting things in this room, and it is very easy to become distracted, and perhaps you could just take that instead, or maybe this thing over here. Or Ash, if you stop for a moment and start to pay attention, you realize that things that were in one place might suddenly seem to be drifting to another. Okay. Um, then, so you wonder if what you're chasing is moving around this room somehow. Okay. So uh, I, so because you notice that other things are as well. So I'm going to tell everybody to just freeze. <laughs> and I'm going to stand still and try to triangulate, not moving forward or anything like that. Just stand still. Okay. Um, if you seem to be, you're standing still, um, and it seems like it's not, it, it seems like the motion of things is, is kind of random. So you, you can actually watch an object sort of drift as if it were caught on a breeze and plop itself down on another chest. Um, or, you know, a, a coin might just sort of roll almost like a tumbleweed across the floor. Um, you, as you suspect, you are in the castle of the Wind Queen, so this is maybe a weird trick of the Wind Queen's treasure room. Um, and you might need to figure out a way to get something to stop moving. Can I look around for any kind of traps or triggers or...? Uh, yeah, go ahead and make an investigation check. Right. Investigation. I'm going to roll Eleven plus three, fourteen. Fourteen. Um, Rocky, you are attuned to the earth as an element, and you notice that a coin that is rolling across the room past you stops on its edge when it gets near you. Interesting. And just sits there on its edge. I bend down and take a closer look. Yeah, you can pick it up. It is a gold coin. It looks slightly unfamiliar. It's not necessarily from where you are from. Um, what happens when I pick it up and take a look? It's it's just a coin. It stopped moving when it got to you, and it didn't stop you from picking it up in any way, shape, or form. Think of what other clues I can give you. <laughs> okay, so what about like on the walls? Like uh, I don't know, in, any <laughs> like magical lasers or I don't know something <laughs> like that. Uh, no, there are there are no magical lasers. Um, <gasps> let's see, space you uh, a la <laughs> space lasers. Uh, let's see. Um, let me double check on something before I totally make something up. Yeah. Fire damage. Um, yeah, so at the longer you sort of stand there, um, you notice that a, um, a necklace sort of drifts by, and when it passes Elena, who is a little bit devilish in her blood, it also sort of pauses in midair and drops to the ground. I'll pick it up and take a look at it. It looks like a necklace, but it was moving on the wind, and when it reached you, or when it reached the coin when it reached Rocky, seemed to not react the way it was. 
as if it didn't know what to do when it encountered another element. So if if I move around the room slowly, um, trying to like catch objects, step catch, but like find the objects that are moving to test them out, can I can I do that? Yeah, when you come into proximity with them, like when you're right up against something that was moving, whether it was rolling across the ground or drifting on these apparent little breezes, it stops. And if it's in midair, it drops to the ground. Okay. So it seems as though some of you, or maybe some skills that you have, can stop things from moving. Mm -hmm. So you maybe need to focus that in on what you're trying to find. So if I grab, if I go, say, I, a near item, if I go to grab it as mm -hmm. it's moving by, does it stop? It does, you can pluck something you can pluck something out of the air but it does not stop moving like it's it's come up against a wall or something is there can I look for anything that doesn't belong something in the collection that doesn't look like it fits the rest one of these things is not like the other <laughs> one of these things is not like the other go ahead and make an investigation check Go ahead, Ash. Make one as well. Okay. Um, we'll we'll put the two of you to your your. All right, I get between because you have the amulet right now. Okay. Fifteen. Okay, so uh, Ash, you you start moving and you feel like you're getting closer to this thing again, um, and Rocky is moving with you, and you suddenly find that um, you are both staring at an open chest with a pile of coins and one of those coins looks a little different um it's actually kind of gross it has a it's it looks like the coin itself has a hole in it um and attached to it is a thumb that seems to be like sewn to the coin and it is sitting on top of this pile uh it looks like it's starting to wobble like it wants to move and then as rocky gets closer it sort of stops again uh, and the amulet at this point has gotten very warm. Rocky, you want to grab that that one right there? No, no, that one right there. <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll I'll reach out and try and grab that. It worked okay the last time. I'm a little weirded I... out by the thumb, bit, but you know, it's it's sort of. Uh, I mean, it's little desiccated it's you know it hasn't been recently detached from anyone here i'll i'll get out a handkerchief and okay no i'm good um, i mean i am kind of made of rock so you know. <laughs> as this is happening you hear the door open behind you and uh for a moment you do not understand the voices um and then they seem to switch to common and there is a a rough voice that says to you hey hey what who, where did you come from but you are holding this thing, Rocky. But there are two dwarves, and behind them, an arrow elemental standing in the doorway. And they look very confused as to how you got here, and a little, a little nervous and upset <laughs> that you are here. <laughs> how many were there? Three. There are two dwarves, two dwarves and, an arrow elemental. and an arrow elemental behind it. I'm just going to hang out for a second. What do you have there? What is that? I'm not sure. I was wondering that myself. Uh, let's see. Elena, do you still have that spell up? I don't remember how long it lasted. Oh, the, uh... The no, it was only one minute. Mm -hmm. Never mind that. Um, yeah, so they want to know what, what you're doing here, what you have, what you think you're doing here. And they look, they look... They're not hostile yet. They're not, they're just real confused about how someone got into this place that no one should have really been able to get into. Um, I'm going to start talking to them in under common and sort of like pretend that I have like Ash is going to say, excuse me, I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're saying, but I'm going to say all of that in under common. <laughs> um, pretending, they... pretending I don't know right. common. Yeah. They look at each other very confused. Um, you, you, none of you speak Dorvish. You believe that's what they were speaking before. They switch to common. They do not know what you are saying now. Uh, and you see hands sort of tighten around the spears a little bit. Um, and you, one of the, there's a, 
male and a female, and the, the male says, what are your intentions? What are you doing here? And he says this again in common. They seem to understand that, or not expect that you would speak Dwarven. And they're going to take a step forward. Come on, guys. Do we not have a face? <laughs> I don't know. Do you have a face? That's not up to me. <laughs> I'll switch to a different language. Let's see. Okay. I'll switch to Elvish and continue to pretend I don't know what they're saying. Okay. Uh, they do not seem to respond to Elvish, but they both take a step into the room and the air elemental moves to block the doorway. And they they are they're and you get this is you get a this is your last warning. They said, Who are you? What are you doing here? Jen, you're muted. Oh, we can't hear Jen. There you go. <laughs> okay, I'm good now. There we go. I'm good. Okay. Um, at this point, seeing as they're a little bit more agitated, uh, Jessen believes honesty is the best policy at this point. Um, so she responds in common, um, and she explains the situation to them that they don't mean any harm here, that they're here to find something that was once lost. Um, they said, "What? What is it?" And they're kind of, they're, they want to know what it, you know, they're asking specifically. We have no idea yet, but this amulet is the clue to it. Um, <laughs> I'll gesture to the weird thumb coin <laughs> and be like, do you know what this is? Or can you explain what this is to us, ho uh, hopefully? Rocky, are you letting them see what you're holding or are you attempting to hide it? Uh, no, I, I think that uh, they, they caught sight of it already. Okay. So I'm not, um, I'm not trying to hide it. I'm just... There is a moment when they both see this thing, and you see them look confused, like they've never seen this before. And then they both look extremely relieved. Uh, and even the air elemental seems to like, if you can imagine an air elemental calming down. And they're like, you found it. You found, you have to get that out of here. The queen is very upset. It is throwing everything off. This is a place of balance and harmony. We don't know what that is. It just showed up here. Well. I guess it showed up here. We didn't know where it showed up. It's just been throwing everything off. And they seem extremely relieved at this. Okay, so while this is happening, I'm going to hold on to the amulet, and I'm going to imagine us back at the the Lord's Manor. At the Lord's Manor? Um, are you... How close are you to Rocky? You were standing near him, so yeah, I assume that you're still in proximity? Yeah. Close, yeah. Okay, so... Um, after a moment, you feel the amulet sort of adapt to the room temperature here. It is no longer too hot. Um, go ahead and roll a d8. Okay. d8. Seven. Okay. Um, is that what you rolled before? I kind of think it might have been. Okay, go ahead and roll again, because <laughs> that's not going to work on this table. <laughs> Do you want me to check the log? Um, I can tell you that's what... Uh, no, actually, you rolled a six last time. This is a seven, so never mind. Um, there is a... Um, so these dwarves are very excitedly in the middle of telling you that you should take that thing. They don't know how you got here, but you should take it, and you should get... And everything stops and there is a flash of light and uh last time when you were transported you saw this sort of saffron gold colored light um now there is a flash of sapphire blue and you find yourself standing uh from what you can tell if you take a moment to sort of take things in uh at the base of a mountain uh that disappears up off to your side uh and then a forest you know, at the base of this mountain on your other side. Um, this is most certainly not where you were, and it is most certainly not Lord River Gleam's Manor. <laughs> um, it seems that the amulet has decided to take you to somewhere else, perhaps in pursuit of another item. So you, Rocky, are still holding this very strange thumb sewn to a gold coin. 
Uh, all right, I think I'm gonna take another <laughs> quick look, and then if I don't see anything, I'll put it away in the pack, I guess. Um, I mean, it looks weird, no, unless you're attempting to actually, you know, detect anything about it. Um, uh, um, which is I mean, up to all of you. You can, as uh, far as you can tell at the I moment, mean, it is a coin with a thumb sewn to it. Guys, I still have no idea what this is. Does anybody know anything about it? Give me a minute. Actually, give me ten minutes. Ten minutes? Are you going to cast I'm gonna uh, rich, Identify? I'm going to richly cast Identify, yes. Okay, so you are all standing at the base of this mountain. Um, you, If you're going to take ten minutes, um, that is that is totally fine. Um, you do notice, Ash, that the amulet is now radiating a small amount of heat again, but nothing substantial yet. Um, and right now your focus is elsewhere. And if you sit here and cast Identify... Um, you get the sense that this item has some sort of, um, um, I gotta double check because I'm real bad with schools of magic. <laughs> uh, it has some sort of abjuration magic coming from it. Um, it resembles a human thumb sewn to a coin, but you believe it would, um, offer some sort of regenerative healing to someone who eventually attuned to it. Okay. In parentheses, for those of you watching out there who like D&D, &D, this is the equivalent of a ring of regeneration. But in a strange object. <laughs> I'll convey what what I discovered. So. <laughs> um, anybody else doing anything while you're sitting here for ten minutes, or are you just uh, waiting on uh, Ash to tell you what this is. Clarification yes. with the DM. Uh, yes. Does identify, uh, does identify also identify potential uh, curses or negative effects associated with things? Or is that just a risk we would take if we were to try to use uh, such a thing? Requires whom how many charges. You learn what spells are affecting the item and what they are. Um, if the item was created by a spell, you learn what spell created. It was not created by a spell. Um, this is a magic item. Um, like I said, you believe it is sort of the equivalent of a ring of regeneration. You can't wear it as a ring, and it does require attunement, so it may not benefit any of you immediately. Um, but you have no reason to believe it is cursed, no. All right. Well. Are the surroundings just like a... Is it just like a huge mountain and then like a flat plain, basically? Yeah, you're where you're sitting or where you, you all are, are taking 10 minutes while this happens is you're at the base of a mountain, which you see climbing up to the side. Um, and then to your other side is a sort of dense um, forest of trees. Okay. Uh, Jesswin is pretty athletic, I would say. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jesswin is going to try to find the tallest tree and climb up of it to see if she were surrounded by anything, if there's a town nearby, um, just to get a good bearing of her surroundings. Okay, go ahead and give me a perception check. And I rolled a 13. Ooh. And with your plus, you have an 18. Mm -hmm. So nice. So yeah, as you all are, are looking at this magic item, Jesswin sort of finds a tall tree and scrambles effortlessly, effortlessly up this tree. Um, it's not the tallest tree around here, so you're probably, a lot of what you're seeing is other forest. Um, the mountain is sort of behind you at this point with you if you're back to it as you've climbed up this tree. Um, from where, from here, you can see things like some possible animal trails through the trees. Um, there are, um, you know, bushes that move that you would suspect there may be an animal there or something along those lines. Um, but you, um, and then off a little bit further, you actually see the bush is parting a little more substantially, and you think you see several humanoid creatures um, on a path. You're not quite sure where. They seem to not be headed directly for you in the base of the mountain. They're headed vaguely in your direction, but a little bit further to the north. Okay. Jesswin is going to go relay that information and suggest that we avoid those, uh, that does that general direction, just in case. Okay. <laughs> After I, I've done with uh, identify, I'll do my whole triangulation bit with uh, the amulet again. Okay. 
Um, let's see. So bad with directions. Okay. So um, if you are sort of turning around, the good news is it doesn't appear to be in the mountain or directly up this mountain. That would be very difficult to climb. <laughs> um, if you are standing there with the mountain on your right, um, it suggests that you should head. Um, let's see. If the parallel path along the mountain is north, which we will say it is for the sake of argument, and the mountain is to your east, um, the amulet is sort of pointing you in a vaguely northwest direction. Is that the same direction as the people? It is indeed the same direction as the people that uh, Jesswin has indicated may be out there. Okay, reluctantly, I will suggest <laughs> I <laughs> I don't want to go. Jesswin doesn't want to go. Um, but reluctantly, she will offer to scout ahead as she is very stealthy. Um, to the general direction so she can see what these humanoid creatures are and if they can possibly pose a threat to us. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll a stealth check as you make your way through the woods. I am trying 17? to bring up the right. 17. Okay. Give me one sec. I got to bring up the right the right table here. <laughs> um, okay. Oh yeah, so you uh, begin to make your way through the brush, and this is this is your kind of activity. You're barely leaving a trail, you know. Nobody nobody be able to follow you, um, and you find yourself. Um, let's see, roll one more thing. Uh, you get fairly close, and you um, you probably stop yourself because you're a little concerned about drawing too much attention. But you see three elves moving through the woods um, and if you were to look up you also see uh, a rather large eagle flying what you would guess is in parallel above them uh, up above the trees um, you're doing pretty well and all of a sudden a branch snaps beneath you uh, and you hear what was that um, and then you hear this in elvish which you do understand, so. After she left a couple minutes, I would have mm -hmm. grabbed my cane and cast message. Okay. And said, what do you see? So for Jen, because she's new to D&D, &D, do you want to tell her how that, what, what she, what that experience is for her? Because. <laughs> so message is like a voice in your ear, and, but you only have a limited number of words to use. In fact, oh. I think it's 25, 25. words. 25. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So, so you hear Ash ask you what you see, mm -hmm. and you instinctively know, you've worked with Ash before, you may have actually experienced this before, you know that you have a set number of words that you can reply and very quietly, and he will hear them as if you were whispering in his ear. Right. Uh, I would say three elves, one eagle... And I'll say, I've been caught. <laughs> okay. I will relay that to everybody else and kind of look at them whether we should head off or not. Uh, so, Jeswin, you, you have heard these voices say, who is that? Mm -hmm. um, and you definitely notice the three of them break off from each other and start to look like they're actively looking for something because this noise was not something they expected to hear. Mm -hmm. um, so you have you have to decide if you want to, what you would like to do. <laughs> and then I'll we'll back to everybody else. Jesswin would rather not be singled out or cornered, so Jesswin will scale up a tree okay. to try to hide from them while she waits for the rest of her party. Okay, go ahead and make another stealth check. 10. Okay. Um. Uh, yeah. You see them moving around beneath you, but they don't seem to have caught on to the fact that you have climbed a tree. Uh, let us jump back to the rest of your party, who now knows that you have been caught, or maybe not been caught, but you have been noticed. 
Um, you all are not that far away. Um, you're not within shouting distance, which you probably wouldn't want to do anyway, but you, uh, you have a party member who may be in trouble. <laughs> Can we start sneaking that direction? Yeah, it's very definitely quick. sneak. Sneak slowly. Um, do we want to split up and like try to circle around them, or all go in one one herd? I'd say a little arc. Kind of an so arc. Okay. We're still with. We're, we're still close to each other. Yeah. Yeah. What? Five, ten feet apart, but yeah. kind of spread out. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and uh, all of you roll stealth checks if you would. Jessalyn. Jessalyn, you're fine because you are uh, hanging out in that tree and so far have not caught any notice. Uh, 14. 20, okay, so we have... <laughs> 24. Okay, so what did you have, Rocky? A 9, nine. you said? Okay. Sorry about nine. <laughs> no, you gotta love those. I, I have my fair share of characters who are not stealthy. Um, so, Ash, you are uh, you're doing great, um, but you uh rolling some things i don't suppose uh, rocky still had his uh pass without a trace up no definitely lost concentration at some point here yeah you you get the sense that while this normally would last for a long period of time um something about the mechanism of transporting from one plane to another would have thrown off your concentration a little bit uh, so as the three of you have sort of split up and are trying to sort of walk in a, a sort of line, um, Rocky obviously kind of tromping a bit on some, some branches and definitely drawing some attention. Um, Ash, you have sort of disappeared in the bushes. You're just like, Phew. Um And Elena, you, you're doing pretty well, but you also, um, you know, kind of hear Rocky... You lose your attention for a moment. You knock against a tree. Um, and you, those of you who speak Elvish ha are now hearing a series of different voices, three different voices, um, which are also moving in your general direction as you are moving in theirs. Um, uh, call out, who's out there? Nobody else is supposed to be out in this area. Who's out here? And they are continuing to move forward and, as you would probably guess, actively searching for you at this point. Can we hear where they are? Or can I hear where they are? I guess we're kind of separated now. Um, yes. Uh, hold on, I had a roll just disappear. Okay. Um, let's see. Go ahead and roll a perception check if you want to try and pinpoint where they are coming from. Okay. 18. Uh, okay, so you can't necessarily pinpoint all of them because you're all in a scattered line, but from the way that the direction that you're moving, you realize you are potentially on course to bump up against one of these elves uh, in another 20 feet or so. The underbrush here is kind of thick, which is sort of working to y'all's benefit, but it's also sort of slowing you down. It's a little harder to move through. All right. I think so you would guess there's one about 20 feet in front of you. I think that um, since they probably noticed me already, be my big, clunky, earthy self... Um, I'm just going to make myself visible. Okay. And I'm not going to reach for my weapons yet, but I'm going to make okay. myself visible and give everybody else a chance to hide, hopefully, and see how things go. Okay. Uh, and on that note, we are close to 7.30, so uh, we're going to go ahead and take our break. Let's leave a little suspense. I'll do this critical role style. We'll, we'll leave some suspense. Uh, and uh, for our viewers out there, we're going to take about a 10-minute break or so for all of our players to grab a snack or grab a drink. Uh, and we will be back shortly.
welcome back to our game. We appreciate you giving us a moment to take a little break, get some snacks, grab a drink. Uh, right before we left off, uh, our party was sort of split up in the woods, and uh, some people were a little trompier than others. Uh, and I believe Rocky was uh, going on out there to draw attention slash give everybody else a chance to do stuff. So let's pick up there. Um, if you sort of walk out, there's not really an open or a clearing here, Rocky, but as you sort of, you're pretty large and you sort of make your way between some bushes, uh, you almost immediately draw the attention of all three of the elves that Jesswin sort of warned you were here. Um, two of them are dressed in relatively simple leathers, um, in sort of greens and browns. You can tell that they are all three of them meant to sort of blend into this environment and disappear. Uh, and then the the two of them, uh, the two those two are carrying uh, short swords, and you see them with long bows on their backs. And you see the third, uh, who is also dressed in sort of uh, some sort of robe like leathers, um, seems to be the one in charge. The other two will look look towards uh, him every once in a while. Uh, like waiting for him to to give a signal. Um, he is not carrying blades or a uh, long bow. He is just carrying what looks like a simple quarter staff in front of him. Uh, and he is the one who addresses you. And uh, unfortunately, he is still speaking Elvish for the moment. Uh, so you're not quite sure what he said. Uh, are you going to? Can, can I reply in common? And you say, can. Hail friend. Uh, he switches to common. He looks at the other two who you probably notice now, you know, weren't, weren't aggressive, but were both resting a hand on their blades and they seem to still the hilt of their swords and they still seem to be doing that. Um, but he looks at you somewhat suspiciously um, because he's not quite sure what you're doing here or how you got here. And he says, hail, sort of with a question mark. <laughs> um, Ash, you are, let's see, Rocky. Um, you're pretty, you're probably 40 to 50 feet from this guy, but you do notice that the amulet is getting a little warmer. Okay. Or has gotten warmer as you have moved closer to this party of people in the forest. I just want to give you that. I, and I was going to ask. I was going to ask. Yes. I was also <laughs> going to say that I'd like to kind of, you know, be as close to 30 feet without giving myself away. Okay, you rolled a 24 on yourself, so I would say you can get within 30 feet for now. You definitely notice the ambulance is getting warmer, but, uh, Rocky, this person just looks back at you and sort of says hail with a question mark, like they're not quite sure, um, who you are, where you came from, and in fact, the next questions are, who are you and where did you come from? <laughs> uh, uh, in common. <laughs> uh, I will act with honesty, um, in the sense say I'm my name's Rocky uh, and I am from the city of Neverwinter I'm not quite sure where I am though <laughs> he looks at you and he says um Neverwinter and then he he thinks you know he goes never never heard of it he thinks he's making a joke whether or not he is um <laughs> he says you got here and you don't know where you are. Um, he seems puzzled by this. Uh, and he sort of looks at the other two and they, they sort of shrug. And he says, uh, my name is Adrazen and you are in Arborea. Mm. Uh, anybody who would like to can roll an intelligence, a straight intelligence check. To see if you know anything about this other plane that you seem to have appeared in. Also, while we're doing that, are, are we uh, uh, eight for me? Are we close enough to like see? Like, am I close enough to see them and like see <laughs> if they're carrying anything? Um, like yeah, a bag you can. Or... Yeah, <clears throat> uh, you can see a couple of them. Um, so we have an eight from Ash, a 9 from Jeswin, who is up in a tree, as, as we recall, uh, an 11 for Rocky, and a 16 for Elena. Um, so, um, let me answer that, and then I'll come back to to that in just a second. So, uh, Elena, you, um, you have some education behind you. You study strange things because they're useful. 
Um, you all know at this point that you are on a mission where you are visiting the outer planes, um, and you understand, you sort of, you know, recall a few things. You know that Orborea is a plane that is a place of nature and moods and feelings. Um, people here are good-natured in general, and they are dedicated as a rule to fighting evil. Um, but they can sometimes be subject to their emotions and, and maybe with consequence. So um, one way to think of it is, is rage may be as common as joy around here. People's moods may flip. Um, and you know that there are, uh, there's a lot of sort of, um, this is a home to many elves and elven deities. So there is a great deal of respect for nature and the land here as well. Um, so there are elves in front of you. You do know that the elves here um, who are born on this plane are not quite like the elves that you might have encountered. Um, but they have some things in common. Um, Ash, go ahead and make an investigation check. I would argue you can see two of these guys, but not the third. Okay. Um, Which two is it? The, the you can see the guy the the one in the center with the quarter staff and the one to if you're looking at them to his left. Okay. Um, or sorry, his right on your left. So if you're looking at him, the one. Okay. Um, twenty two. Okay, I was on the wrong screen. I did not see that. There we go. Twenty two. Um, he does not appear to be carrying a bag. Um, there is. Nothing. Well, the two that you can see, neither of them are carrying a bag. They only appear to be carrying their weapons. Um, they do have, like, each of them has, like, a pouch on their belt. A small pouch, but nobody's carrying anything large. So, uh, DM question. Yes. Um, magic hand, or mage hand. Mage hand? Would that convey the heat from the amulet? Hmm... Good question. <laughs> um, I would say no, okay. because you don't feel, you just tell the hand okay. to do something. You don't experience the feeling through the hand. Okay. All right. Did I find anything about these elves since I can't communicate with the others? Right. Um, uh, what were you, what did 11. you want to know? Yeah. Okay. Um, Eleven. And what did you want to know? Uh, we were just doing uh, investigation checks to learn. Oh. Or not uh, intelligence checks. Intelligence checks, yeah. Um, I mean, I think with an eleven, you believe that these are elves, whether or not they come from this place. You know that you're on another plane, so you don't know necessarily if these are elves um, from this plane or from your home who happen to be here for a reason. Um they are not behaving aggressively towards you. More than anything, they are curious because apparently you get the sense they don't encounter whether it's outsiders or Earth Genasi or what, but you, you're, they, they're definitely intrigued by the fact that you don't know where you are and you don't seem to know <laughs> yet that right. you got here and uh, you don't know how I'll, you are. I'll speak back to them. Uh, uh, I, I apologize. I'm simple Genasi. I don't know anything about Arborea, and I'm glad to explain how I got here, but it may take some time. I sense that you may also care deeply about the earth and the lands as I do. Um, uh, Adrizen looks at you and he gestures sort of to his staff and to himself, and he says, what, what good druid does not care about the land? Um, but I am also intrigued by stories, he says, uh, and he gestures to the two elves on either side of him, and he uh, says, these are my companions, Calarel and Elowen. Um, if you have a story, we would hear it. Um, there is no clearing here or anything, but they've definitely, like, calmed. Their, their hands are moving away from weapons, except he's still holding his quarterstaff, because he's always holding his quarterstaff. Um but they seem to be giving you an opportunity to explain whatever it is you would like to explain. <laughs> or if anyone else would like to do something, we do have three other people uh, in various places in the trees as well while this is happening. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to out anybody else 
yet, but I okay. will start uh, in my uncharismatic way explaining what I can of our backstory. I don't suspect there's anything risky about telling them other than that they might be incredulous. Okay. And while he's doing that, I'm going to circle around and try to see if I can get any sense of is is the object on one of them? Okay. Um, and also, also especially see if I can see anything about the the guy I, I couldn't see. Or okay, um, go ahead and roll an investigation check. Twenty one. Okay, I'm I'm doing some other things. Hold on a sec. It's a lot of people to manage this whole this whole DMing thing. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, you uh, you are able to circle around. They seem distracted enough by Rocky. Um, you are not sure. Uh, the other one that you can see as you circle around. Um, is dressed just like the other. You don't, they, the, the two um, that are with the druid pretty much seem, I mean, they look different, but they seem identical in their dress and their mannerisms. Um, as you are passing across the middle, which means you would be passing behind Adrazin, whose name you have heard because you can kind of all hear what's being said, uh, you do get warmer. And as you continue past him to see the other scout, you do get, it does get cooler again. Um, Jesswin is a bit curious about that eagle that's been flying, mm -hmm. like, right above them. Uh, can she, like, do an investigation check or a perception? Go ahead and make a perception check. Mm -hmm. 16 plus 5, 21. Okay, so you notice, um, that, uh, finish rolling something here. Uh, so you are kind of keeping an eye up, and uh, the, the eagle cannot come down through the trees. There's too much cover, and this is a giant eagle. It is a large creature. Um, but you do notice that when the elves stopped, the, um, the eagle is essentially doing loops around, mm -hmm. because it has not landed anywhere, but it is clearly circling above them. Um, as if either it would wait for a signal of some sort, or... Um, it's just chilling until it's told to do otherwise. <laughs> Can we tell how uh, close Jeswin is to like all of us kind of circled around each other? Because I, I feel like I'm still pretty close, like within 20 feet, uh, last I knew of these Yeah, two. but none of you know where she was, okay. and she rolled real well when she climbed okay. that tree. So passively, none of you know okay. where she is. <laughs> as far as you know, she's okay. These elves are not holding her, you know, aggressively or, you know, holding her severed head or something. She seems to be, but you have no idea where she is. Okay, I'm going to try something that's probably not going to work. Okay, so Rocky is telling them the story of how you got this far. Um, how much are you telling them about what, are, are you telling them that you're looking for something? Are you? Uh, yeah, that we were sent out on a, 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 sent on a mission by someone who had lost things to try and find lost things. Okay. And we didn't get all the information, so we didn't know where we were going. Okay. Um, Adrizen is paying close attention to what you're saying and asks, well, even though you've just said we don't really have details, what what kind of things? You're not sure if he doesn't believe you that you don't know, or he's just trying to suss out the situation, or what? Well, we're not really sure about that either. They are unique things. Things that might seem out of place. Where they ended up. Uh, okay. Um... Rocky and Ash and Elena, who probably all have direct line of sight, go ahead and make a perception check. Uh, 
18. Okay. Two. <laughs> Elena, real distracted by these woods. <laughs> you don't know what's going on. Uh, Ash and Rocky, when when you Rocky, when you say things that are out of place, you both notice almost imperceptibly his left hand twitches near the pouch on his belt. But he says nothing. He says, uh, this is a place where anything that is not nature is out of place. Um, but it's kind of a cryptic answer. Yeah, so you definitely saw his hand imperceptibly move towards the pouch on his left hip when, when, when Rocky said things that are out of place. Okay, I wanted to try to cast... Uh, detect magic. Uh, but, okay. But I, I want to cast it as a ritual while they were talking. <laughs> um, I I would say because you were you were sneaking around and trying to investigate some things. Um, ten minutes is a long time. Yeah. I think you could start this process if you wanted. Um, but it's going to rely on everybody keeping them busy for. Uh, another eight minutes plus yeah. Just at to this be point. Clear, I'm not really good at talking. I'm not really good at <laughs> and you know Rocky is not good at talking. You've worked with Rocky before. <laughs> yeah, I I can only cast it as a ritual. As a so... ritual. Okay. Um you know what? I'm just I'm gonna go ahead and try. Just because I think I know, but I wanna be be certain. Okay. Can I see where Ash is? Can I? Do I have a line yes. of sight? Yes. I would say you you have a sense. You know where Rocky is. You have, or you see, you would at least suspect that Ash is. I mean, he rolled real stealthy, so you may not actually know where he is. Uh, go ahead and roll a perception okay. check. Your passive perception is probably not good enough. It is not. And Jaswin see everything that's going on as because she has like a high because you have a high perch. You can see you you do kind of get a good uh, lay of the land and an understanding. Uh, Elena, with that three, you you do not know. You know where Ash was. You maybe Ash isn't there anymore, but <laughs> who knows? He's got that wizard. He's a wizard and a rogue. He's just gone. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep trying to talk. Well, I hope that somebody else figures something out. Obviously, I okay. noticed there's something about that hip pouch, but... But you're not going to make a move on it. Okay. okay. Um, Did we see the eagle when we were coming up, or just the elves? No, you oh, cannot no, see did, the eagle. We knew the... there was an eagle, though. Cause you did know there was an eagle because Jeswin told you you cannot see it through the trees. Um, which is in a, actually means it can't see you, so that's kind of helpful. And I know it can't see you because it rolled really terrible on its perception <laughs> check. Um, Jeswin is going to slowly sneak down the tree, um, to see if she can get any, like, indirect subliminal information <laughs> from Rocky or Ash. <laughs> okay, uh, go ahead and, and roll a stealth check again if you want to come back out of that tree but not be detected. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also, at the same time, somehow, uh, draw attention to your, com of your companions. Uh, with a 21, yeah, you can do that. You come down out of this tree, um, and I would say you... Uh, given where you kind of were and where everybody else is uh, in our theater of the mind, um, you probably don't have the ability to make eye contact with both of them. You would have to sort of pick one of them that you can see mm -hmm. and try to make eye contact if you want to do that. But I will let you decide who it is you would like to make. Sort okay. of. I'm going to make eye contact. <laughs> hand gestures and eye contact <laughs> and magic like little finger symbols with. Okay, I'm going to um, make eye contact with ash and see what he can tell me i will also point out that both you and ash are fluent in thieves cant which is not only a spoken language but includes gestures and symbols so you would potentially be able to communicate limited things to each other with minimal hand gestures and looks would and without a verbal component would i be able to do that while i'm still setting up the ritual yeah, you're actively setting up a ritual. No. Jeswin can send you some signals, but you are actively engaged in attempting to set up a ritual right behind some people in the woods, so you've got to focus on being sneaky about that. <laughs> hmm. So she could relay some simple things to you, 
but I think you would have to abandon your ritual casting if you wanted to convey information back to her. If okay, I, I am going to... Oh, go ahead. I was going to ask, if I abandon it, do I have to start all over again? Um, I think technically yes, but I'm going to say no for the... I'm going to let you hit the pause button. Because I would assume you're sort of trying to lay some things out in a circle without drawing a lot of attention, so you could kind of pause in that if you would like to relay something. Okay. Uh, Rocky, are you offering to tell the story of what you have just been through, or is this a long, awkward silence, which is also <laughs> a possibility? Uh, this is a uh, long, awkward silence for the most part. <laughs> Uh, hoping okay. that they'll ask some more questions. Uh, can I do an insight check while I'm doing that to see if I notice anything else about their gestures? Uh, yeah. Alright. Uh, 12 and 5, 17. Um, at this point they just seem to be listening to what you were saying to them. You don't notice any uh, sort of tells like the very obvious one that happened when you said things that are not from around here. Um, before uh, you um, are certainly not going to catch w catch note of Jeswin because she's rolled too well, um, and I it, it, because of the there is a moment of awkward silence, um, but I I will I would say since these elves are curious about you that they might start to ask you uh, because you had indicated a uh, reverence for nature where you come from and what that place is like because they don't seem to know what Neverwinter is which would suggest you they are not from the material plane but <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to start telling them about uh, the city of Neverwinter and um, growing up in the midst of the ruins listening thinking uh, being with the earth and hearing about you know, many of the less than less than morally upright plans and ideas that people had in places like that. Okay. Uh, they seem to uh, appreciate your perspective on things. They are intrigued by uh, you, they will offer to you that they they are part of a clan that lives here, um, so they live in a semblance of community, but not in anything from what they're describing uh, that you would understand to be anywhere on the scale of a city. It's they are more like a, a clan of elves that live in the woods, which even you know on the material plane is very common that many of the woods have clans of elves living in them, uh, whose values are very similar to, to these elves that you are meeting, although they are native to this place. Um, I would say you uh, go ahead and... Uh, no, you're keeping them busy with some interesting stories, so I would say we'll, we will give Ash the opportunity to complete this ritual. Because <laughs> uh, I like this I like this tactic. <laughs> um, and at the end of that time, Ash, you become acutely aware that the pouch on the left hip of our new friend Adrazin is most certainly containing a magical item. Mage um, hand. It is, oh, wait, let me tell you, I gotta give you more than that. Or think, undetect magic? I can't remember how much I get to give you. Uh... You can sense magic within 30 feet. You can see a faint aura. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it would be... And school of magic, yeah. That's what I'm looking up because I'm uh, real, real bad at that. Uh, <laughs> this would be um, evocation. Okay. I think. I'll double check on that. Nope, conjuration. Sorry, okay. conjuration magic. Well, so you're gonna try and mage hand this thing away? I'm gonna try to mage hand and try to sneakily reach into the pouch and grab it. Okay, so the mage hand cannot pass through things. Right. It would and have the to, pouch like... is tied shut. Ugh. So I would need to <laughs> untie it first and then go in. So, Or try to take the whole thing. That, those, I think, would be your options. 
um, because the hand can manipulate an object, so it can attempt to get into the pouch. Okay. Um, gonna, or it could I'm take the pouch. I'm going to try. It's on his hip. It is on his hip. I'm yes. going to try to, like, sneakily loosen it and then. Okay, uh, go ahead and roll a sleight of hand check with your stats, I guess, because it's each hand. 21. And he's gonna roll to see if this catches his attention, because I feel like he would definitely... Um, let's see. Roll in some dice. Uh... Yeah, so your mage hand grabs hold of the pouch, and uh, there's a, a, a moment where you think you're going to get away with this, and then he notices the shift in weight, and he looks down in time to see the pouch drifting slightly behind him in a ghostly hand. I meant and... to, like, open it and reach in. Oh, it. you were trying to open it. I wasn't trying okay. to take the pouch. I was trying to, like... Sneakily. He still rolled real well, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, so I, I think um, even though the hand doesn't weigh anything, the the shift of balance, something something felt wrong to him. Uh, so he would... Do you see the mage? Or would he see the mage hand? I can't remember how the spell works. It's a spectral hand. So he kind of sees this faint outline of a hand trying to untie and get into the pouch on his belt. Uh, and he looks very confused and would turn to trace the hand to its origin, uh, which I suspect would lead right back to you behind him. <laughs> yep. Um, and he looks at you, and then he looks at Rocky, and he says, I should have known you weren't here by yourself. Uh, and he he's holding his quarterstaff, and you see his whole body tense, um, although he is not going to make the jump on you all. He says, what? What? That's mine. That's mine. Give it back. And he, he grabs for it like he's trying to hold it against himself. He says, I found that. It's mine. Okay. So. Mage hand disappears. Okay. I am very frustrated. I have no idea what's going on, but I just heard like tense voices because I've been looking at a butterfly or something over here. So I, I stand <laughs> up and try to get a sense of what's going on. Tiefling pops up out yep. of the tree. Um, you see Rocky, you see in between Rocky and Ash now, this uh, druid who has a hand on his pouch and looks somewhat angry. Uh, and you see two elves on either side of him who are both once again holding on the hilts of their blades, waiting on a signal from him. Where are they facing? Uh, the elf, the druid is sort of moving back and forth between looking at Rocky and looking at Ash, who has suddenly appeared behind him. Uh, the other two are just looking towards their superior slash leader slash uh, druid companion, waiting for... Uh, you do see them starting to look around a little bit, like, oh, wait, if there's two of them, are there more of them? Okay, that was my next How question. Yeah. But you're popping up out of the bushes, so you don't need to roll a stealth check. Yeah, nope, I was just... What's up? Uh, how far away am I from the elves? Uh, you are pretty close, because you've been talking to them. The two of them, the two scouts have kind of kept their distance because their job is to be aware of things. Uh, but I would say you are uh, definitely within ten feet of this druid. Who was maybe your friend, now you're not so sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, did I by chance notice what was going on? Why he was... Yes, okay. because the hand is not invisible. Right. Uh, so you probably would have seen something happening and obviously it has caught this druid's attention. Alright, I'm going to try to subtly start reaching for uh, my mall while, <laughs> while I watch what's going on. Okay, Nothing and Elena, what are... Yet. Okay, neither are they. They're all on edge, but they're not attacking it either. Elena's popping up out of the bushes and doing... Do they see me? Do they hear me right away? Oh, well, yeah, you ax you pop up out of the bushes. Yep, okay. <laughs> so I'm ready hide, for action so. because I heard tense voices. So you have drawn attention. Um, and yep. I, I'm not moving. I'm just, like, surveying and trying to see what kind of is going on. They're even more confused by you because they've probably never encountered a tiefling here in Arborea. Yes. <laughs> not surprising. Um, and Adrazin says, uh, the moment he said 
you were looking for things that didn't belong here. I should have known you were coming for it. I found it. It's mine. Um, All right. I'm feeling like this is going to not go anywhere good. So I'm going to go ahead and take out my weapon and um, get ready to attack. Okay. Uh, he does not like this, but he looks... He looks at you sort of curiously, um, and he says, um, I mean, why do you need it? How far is Jeswin compared to everyone else? Uh, you were up in a tree. Um, <laughs> I remember I climbed moving. down. Yeah, so I, I would say, and you've been moving really stealthy, so, I mean, I could, I, I would say you could be as close as you would like, I, you could be as close as 15 feet hiding in the bushes if you wanted to be. Okay. I think any closer than that, people would be like, wait a minute, there's another one over there. Um, how far are the two side lackeys from each they other? They are each about 10 feet from Adrazin in the center, so mm -hmm. they are about 20 feet from each other. And they have a clear vision a clear like sight of line for, they for basically all of them. have a line of sight okay. over the bushes yeah you all are tall enough that you you would have that we don't have any halflings in the party okay um i'm going but he's asking why I'm, yeah he's I, asking yeah, why you want just it just say we're just trying to return it to the person it belonged to okay jeswin what did you want to do oh i'll wait until his oh, response okay. <laughs> uh he says it was stolen from someone it belongs to someone uh and that's kind of a question, it's kind of a statement, um, and he says, I could see why they would want it back. Um, and he sort of sighs for a moment, and you, um, he seems to be mulling something over. So, Jesswin, if you want to do something, I will give you the opportunity to do that while he mulls over his next, next step. I'm just going to take out my dagger in preparation in case something goes wrong, but <laughs> okay. I'm still waiting for what he is going to do next okay he uh he puts his hand in the pouch and he pulls something out and he's looking at it in his hand and for a moment none of you can quite see what it is um and he says i could certainly see why someone would want it back and he looks at ash because you're the one who tried to literally take it off of him and he says i'm not just going to give it to you there has to be a trade and he shows you something, and he the, what he's holding in his hand is a small brooch with a painted portrait of a woman in silhouette. And underneath it, you just see two letters, and they are I and A. Uh, he says, it's if it's not mine, I should give it back, but you have to earn it. He says... We can trade, or we can riddle. What would you have? Okay, so just just so detect magic up to ten minutes, so I'd still yep. be able to see the aura around it. Yes. Okay. Yep. It's still the same conjuration because I think it was conjuration um, that it would be, but this was just detect magic, so you don't know explicitly what it does. The the um, amulet by now is very warm, though. You you know that this is what you are here for. Uh, but he is offering to bargain if there is something you would offer him, or he seems to be willing to riddle for it. So, and you're not sure what that means. Any of you, you can all hear this. None of you know what that means, but I just want to keep trying different things. So I'm going to say insight check. Is he lying about that? About being willing to trade yes. or riddle for it? Yep. Uh, go ahead and roll an insight check. Okay, so it's a 7 and a 7, so 14, but um, one of the, the rogue things I have. Yep. Means Do you have reliable talent? It, well, sort of. It's whenever you make an insight check to determine whether a creature is lying, treat a roll of 7 or lower as an 8. So, 15. <laughs> okay. As an eight. Wow, that's an odd one. Okay. Um, let me get to my little friend here. Um, uh, he is not lying. Okay. You, you sense a reluctance um, 
for reasons that you have not asked and he has not yet offered, uh, he very clearly does not want to give this up, but he also uh, respects that it is, it actually has an owner. He, he has found it and therefore is like, oh, it's mine. But if it actually has an owner um, subject to the sort of fickleness of this place, he is sort of at the moment respectful of that. Uh, I'll say to him, I'm just a simple creature of the earth, but let me introduce you to my companions, and since he's already seen, do I want to out all three of them, or just the two that they know? Mm. Just two. They don't know about Jeswin yet. Yeah, we'll let Jeswin stay in hiding for the moment. <laughs> she's got a dagger out, but she's hiding in the bushes. <laughs> so I'm going to point out the other two and introduce them. Okay. Um, he seems that you aware that you would probably have heard the introductions before, but he would introduce the two scouts with him again as Calarel and Elowen. Um, but he asks again, um, what would you trade or would you answer my riddles? And he seems to give you a little bit more of what that intention of what that meant. Is it aimed just at me or... No, it's aimed at all of any any of the, the three of you that they now know about. So, I would Ash would say, we are just humble employees. We don't have <laughs> much in the way to trade. You speak of riddles. Is this a riddles three kind of thing? He says, I have never met people who are not from here. I would be curious if you would know the answers to my riddles. He says, that would be knowledge for me of people of this other world. He says, um, he, he gestures to Rocky and says, the, the stories that he have told us, he has told us, have already paid part of this debt, is, a, I suppose, a way of saying so. But if you answer my riddles, some of my riddles, let's say, then I would feel that this treasure was appropriately earned. I'll look at, at uh, everybody and kind of try to see what they're thinking, of course. I mean, y'all can tell, tell Ash what your faces look like <laughs> and what you're, how you are considering what you would consider about this situation. I'm just sort of raising my eyebrows like, don't look at me. <laughs> I don't do riddles. <laughs> uh, Elena thinks she might might be able to uh, handle some riddles. Um, I don't have anything I'm willing to trade at this point, so I guess we'll uh, we'll test it out. Um, he says I have uh, five riddles, and if you can answer three of them, and the story of of this Neverwinter place then I will allow this item to go back to its owner with great reluctance. Can we answer? Do you accept? Can we answer as a group? Oh. Yes. Okay. So yes, you will be able to, mechanically speaking, if you are agreeing to this, um, either one of you can just try to roll in. If you actually know the answer, we'll, we can do that. If you don't actually know the answer, these are not super hard riddles, but they are in fact riddles that I incorporated into this game. Um, if you know an answer, then then you can use it. If you don't, then we have a we can come up with a, a mechanism for rolling intelligence, um, intelligence saves or intelligence checks to essentially give you the answer. Um, and I will allow you to work together in the sense that one of you could roll with advantage. So Ash will spa will uh, speak in Elvish and say, okay. "Agreed." Okay. Uh, Ash says that. Uh, and uh, Jeswin understands it. Nobody else does. Um, and he uh, will offer you his first riddle. Um, I think he's trying to be respectful of the fact that he realizes you do not all understand, so he will, he will riddle with you in common rather than in Elvish uh, and not expect you to translate. Uh, so... Riddle number one. I'm so excited I came up with this because I was like, oh, this is never going to come to fruition. Um, 
is, uh, and these are, I will, I will tell you up front, these are basically uh, one to two word answers. So it's just a, a description. It's not even a question. It's a description and something that answer that meets that description. Um, so the first one he offers you is, I have two heads but one body. The more I stand still, the faster I run. So you all are welcome to, to like discuss this as a party. If one of you knows the answer, that's great. And it, it, I'll give you a little little window of time here. If none of you do, then we can roll for it to see uh, if anybody's character can figure it out. And I am happy to repeat if you ask me. If you need to hear it again, just let me know. Any ideas? So we don't do a check or <laughs> uh, two heads one body I have two heads but one body the more I stand still the faster I run okay so what runs what runs in this end of fire rivers yeah um, oh rivers, rivers. oh they don't really have do they have I think that's a good answer. Yeah, there's something there. Yeah, that there's something there for sure. It could be a river because they start, you know, like they branch, right? But I don't know. So here's what I'll do. I'll let you try and answer. If you are wrong, I will I will give you a roll. And then, and then if you're if you don't roll well enough, we're going to consider that one a loss. And you're trying to get three out of five. Okay. First, so. what else runs? Okay, I'm just trying to. Think. Refrigerator doesn't make sense in the context. <laughs> um. It has to be in this environment, right? Because they wouldn't have... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a concept that they would understand, yes. Can Jesswin or contribute thing. as she is unknowingly in the tree still? Well, you're... Um, I would say from... Yes, you can't contribute. If somebody decides to roll, then you, you would not be able to assist in that. But I would say from a player perspective, I would encourage you to participate in this discussion. Okay. I don't wanna I don't wanna keep anybody out of the, the, the discussion. Um, I would say rather than an object, if it's a concept, time runs. Ooh. Oh, there you go. Yeah, but not the a second part, the more I stand still. I have two heads but one body. The more I stand still, the faster I run. Hourglass. Yes. Yes. Correct. That's one. Good job. Oh, well <laughs> done. Is, by the way, this is payback for all the puzzle rooms and escape rooms that I force my students to do. And I give them <laughs> stupid riddles. So, good all job. Right. <laughs> there you go. Uh, number two. Always, I do tell the truth, yet cannot speak. Look at me and see what really is. Ooh, reflection. No. Say, mirror. Okay, mirror. Oh. Yeah. Correct. That's two. <laughs> um, here we go. Uh, two brothers we are. Great burdens we bear. All day, if we are bitterly pressed. Yet this I will say. We are full at day and empty when we go to rest. And that one's a long one, so I can read that again, if it helps. Yes, please. please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in fact, because I will, I will also drop it in our chat for our players that we are meeting, that we have going on the back end. Two brothers we are, great burdens we bear. All day if we are bitterly pressed. Yet this, this I will say, we are full at day and empty when we go at rest probably the hardest one so <laughs> so 
if it's an object, it's full and then gradually empties throughout the day and then refills. Um, this is where the DM gets I mean, to hydrate while you like, all ponder. <laughs> that sounds like my giant coffee cup, but I'm guessing that's not the answer. <laughs> the great coffee cup of Arborea. <laughs> How do you know about that? <laughs> bitterly I got nothing on this one, guys. No, bitterly pressed. Okay, but the coffee got me thinking. Um, <laughs> uh, both in real life and and uh, conceptually. Um, Alternatively, you can somebody can just roll for it. No, no, no. Hang on. But you got you got some room here. You still have two more options after this one. So maybe it's literal, like it presses down on something, and as it presses down, it empties out, and then there's like that ebb and flow. Yeah, I was thinking tide, but that doesn't quite work. Yeah, I was going there too. Um, uh, grapes. I was thinking pressed, like pressed grapes. That doesn't. Quite Something that is pressed, but then will like fill back up. But it's a pair. Oh, and a pair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Mm -hmm. Does the does the <laughs> if matter all day if we are bitter, bitterly pressed? Am I overthinking it? Probably. If it's if it's like a pair, I was like thinking maybe like a pair. Pants or socks or that would be clever with pants. Yeah, that's pants, legs, <laughs> and pull a day empty when we go to rest. That works. But they're not pressed, I would say. Sure. Well, not bitterly really... pressed. <laughs> I mean, theoretically, we're supposed to iron our clothes and things. <laughs> but would they, I mean, it could also, would they iron their clothes? Like, we know that no, they're, like, creatures not. of the, of the land. It they could, probably aren't. It could be it. a, it could be a pair of shoes. I, yeah, I think you were right on with the socks or shoes. Shoes would make sense in terms of the great burdens. And you press down. Yeah, if I we are bitterly pressed. Yes, especially, they're probably not wearing socks. <laughs> that, that's, yeah. Footwear. You wanna you wanna roll investigation to see if they're wearing socks? <laughs> um He he sort of smiles and he says close enough. Uh the answer is technically worn out boots. But but I will give you that. You are you are in there. Um and he sort of his smile turns a little bit sad. Um and you see him look at this small brooch slash portrait in his hand again um and he very reluctantly hands it over to you ash and the uh amulet in your hand becomes very hot and then it becomes sort of neutral again to the temperature of the air oh i was gonna try and say thank you <laughs> no you haven't you haven't bamfed out you have to that takes oh. a, a conscious action on ash's part I just oh. mean you have clearly obtained yeah. the item you were meant to, and the temperature uh, of the amulet sort of resets at that point. I'd like to offer, uh, if, if offer if they like the, uh, not the thumb coin, but the other one that stopped at my feet that I picked up, just as a, I know it's not much, but if you The like. gold coin that you, that you, yeah. you apparently took, yeah. and I didn't even realize you took with you. Yeah, um, he... He will accept this, and he looks at it curiously, and he says, uh, I think I know where this is from. And you see him pocket it and put it in the pouch that he took the brooch out of. And he seems to accept this as a, an additional sort of payment to his trade. Uh, he says, if you seek other items, I wish you well. And then he turns, and the three of them walk away. <laughs> and you are left standing in the bushes. Still no idea where Jesswin is. <laughs> uh, as soon as they walk away, I'm going to turn around and see if I can find her. It, same. Yeah, okay. I'll start looking around for her. 
Uh, unless she is popping out of the bushes, y'all are gonna have to roll <laughs> perception checks to find her, but... Oh, you're muted again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so basically, when she just when sees them all leave, she'll jump down the trees. Um, obviously pleased that nothing happened. <laughs> Big happened, at least. Okay, and once we're all together, I'll kind of look around and say... And we're off, and I'll focus on the, the new amulet. Okay. Or focus on the uh, original amulet. Yep. Go ahead and roll a d8, okay. and we will see uh, where where this goes. Five. Five? Okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, there is a moment like the other moments you have experienced before where you are standing in this place and then you are no longer standing in this place. Uh, and you, uh, there is a bright, bright blue white sort of diamond blue flash. And you all find yourself standing on a wide open ground. And this is, this is a little bit different. You've been in, you've been sort of in the woods and in the forest. So there's a kind of shocking moment where you find yourself standing completely exposed on a ground that looks to be made of brass or some some it is cer more certainly metal and brass it is sort of shiny and things reflect off of it and far off in in your sort of line of vision you see very large clockwork gears um far off in the distance uh so far off that you're not, you can see them, but it's, it's unclear if they are moving or not moving. Um, and, uh, you see that far off in the distance ahead of you, but in the other directions, it just seems like open nothingness. Uh, except off in one direction where you see some very small dots on the horizon. So now that we figured out that we're going to different planes in the outer planes, can I do an arcana check to see if I know anything about you where may. Anybody who, who wishes to may do an Arcana check to figure out where you are. And while we're doing that, I'm also going to do my dousing. Yes. 19. Uh, 11. So let's... 11. <clears throat> 22. Uh, okay, so the 19 and the 22, uh, the two of you, uh, again, sort of relying on pieces of knowledge that you have... Uh, uh, Jesmyn, this is not exactly your skill set. And Elena, you have once again become distracted by something. This is a fascinating place because there are giant <laughs> gears over there. What do they do? What are they controlling? The big sparkly, yep, okay. Do uh, they, yep, big sparkly artificer type, what is this? Uh, you have no idea. <laughs> I'm, I'm, so, uh, I'm expecting that. <laughs> Wandered away, bye guys. Rocky and Ash, you uh, suspect, based on what you see around you, that you now find yourselves on the plane of Mechanus. Uh, this is a lawful neutral place uh, that is controlled by order. Um, you, you know that there are not uh, humanoid inhabitants of this place, but there are indeed... Um, mechanical of sorts uh magic of sorts if you talk about this uh i would imagine elena is suddenly redrawn to what you are saying and is very intrigued by all of this um you the the large cogs that you see far off in the distance which you suspect will not be your goal um <laughs> because it's too far away it based on the proximity to things you have you have come into before uh is probably the the city that is at the center of this place um but yeah you are you are on the plane of mechanus uh as you are turning around in circles ash doing doing your thing <laughs> um off in the the distance um let's see let's let's say to your east we'll just pick a direction it's fine with me <laughs> uh off to the east you saw these little dots on the sort of edge of your vision on the horizon, and you suspect that is your direction to go. Okay. Well, if Rocky... be real hard to stealth here, though. Yeah. So, <laughs> if Rocky doesn't convey the that information, I will, and then I will kind of like point and 
start start towards the warmth start start towards the warmth <laughs> Uh, yeah, so as you all begin to cross this open metal plane, P-L-A-I-N, because there is really no other word for it. This is an open plane that just happens to be um, made of metal. Uh, as you come within a reasonable distance to be able to see detail, uh, what you see are... Um, it's very strange. Nothing like any of you have ever seen. Although, Elena, this is very interesting because these appear to be constructs. Uh, they There are three cubes on legs with arms and short bows on their backs uh, that are... Um, they're actually probably come up to like way, a little higher than waist height. They are considered creatures of your own size. Uh, they have a set of spindly mechanical legs and spindly mechanical arms. They do have some wings, uh, and uh, but you're not sure if they... You can't quite see them. They seem to all be walking at this point. Uh, and they, as I said, they are armed with short bows. And there are three of them in line. And at the front of the line is uh, a larger, uh, and actually, in effect, mechanically large. This is larger than any of you in terms of creature size. Takes up more space. Um is a much larger sort of cube, but a little bit more like leaning towards circular, um, but it has a sort of human-like head, and then it has like four arms that are kind of tentacly coming out from the body in all directions. Uh, and you see them marching in a line to what end you are not sure, because ahead of them on the horizon you see no obvious goal. They are just walking across this open space. Uh, are you just going to walk at them? They are they are moving ahead of you, so you are catching up potentially to them. Um, so at this point, they have taken. Uh, at this point, you are still, you know, several hundred feet away, and they have not taken any notice of you yet. But you are on an open plane, so you suspect you may not have too much more um, getting close if one of them happens to turn around or something. Do I have any sense if it, if, uh, I mean, I guess it's just directional, so I don't have a sense if they are the source or if beyond is the source. Um, you have, you have gained some distance, you know, have you been catching up to them because they don't seem to be, they seem to be moving at whatever pace they move at you don't know if this is their full pace or you know not um but i would say you are noticing a gradual increase in the heat um so you these given your experience so far you would suspect something about these is going to be your target because otherwise there is nothing further that you can see on the expanse okay. um, but you are not close enough at this point because you're still several hundred feet away to have any clear sense of if there is something unique about one of them or anything, you're going to have to get closer or figure out some way to get an idea of that. Okay. Well, I'll... and you're not sure what will happen when they notice you or not notice you. <laughs> I will tell everybody that I think it's one of those things. They're still a ways off, right? More than I would say they're about 250 feet out from you. Yeah. Uh, and most of you move at about 30 feet around. I assume that you are not running, which might draw active attention if you're, but maybe you are. You tell me. If you're moving faster than normal, we can, you can make up the distance, but you might be more prone to drawing attention. You tell me. <laughs> we should walk toward them for now and just see if we learn anything. Okay. Uh, let's see. We have... Half elf, tiefling. Um, so, do you intend to just get closer and then maybe want to look again, or do you have any ideas for anything that you wish to do to impact that or affect that? I just am getting closer. I don't have any big plans yet. Okay. <laughs> but I figure that we shouldn't let our quarry walk away from us. Okay. Um, how close are you? 
Uh, at, at a certain point, I have to start rolling checks to see if you're noticeable. Uh, so how close would you uh, like to get? If you were starting at 250 feet, I mean, is I'll there a point at this, which you want to stop? I'll discuss yeah. this with my people. If nobody has any better ideas, then if we can get within 60 feet, I can at least do a magic awareness. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Plus, I would love to know more about these things. <laughs> Follow then we might as well go okay. through. It's not like we're hidden one way or the other. Okay. Uh, so how close did you say? 60 feet. 60 feet. Okay. Give me one second. Got to roll some things. I mean, okay. The joy of, as I'm now learning of DMing, is, you know, rolling behind the scenes. <laughs> okay. Got, got numbers here. I feel like there needs to be a riff here. Uh, this DM okay. roll is brought to you by... <laughs> okay. Um, Hashtag not spawn uh, you, you get within 60 feet of this... Uh, line of strange uh, constructs uh, and they if they've taken notice of you they are not giving that away or perhaps they've just not taken notice of you um, all of you can go ahead and roll uh, a perception investigation check to see if you are now that you are much closer uh, whether there is anything worth noticing here investigation yes investigation got a 17. Well. 26. Oof, 26, 22, 17. Okay. Um, yeah, so some of you are very clued in. You're, you're starting to, the, the three little cubes that are walking with wings, um, you are uh, understanding, you've you're got a sense of what they look like and you expect them to look like. The other one's a little bit harder, so it does take you a minute of sort of following and, and eyeballing this thing to understand that there is something that appears to be something extra that is on it. Um, it looks like a scroll case, but it is larger. It is it is wider in diameter and longer, and it is on a strap, and it appears to be over the head-like portion of the uh, weird one with the tentacles at the front. The metal, metal tentacles. Can I use magic awareness? It doesn't look like it belongs. Magic awareness, yes. And I am learning about what this does. So <laughs> I know we already used it, but I already forgot what magic. it did. Incense, uh, spells, magic yes. items, and schools of magic. Let's see. I got to pull up the item because you didn't ask me about the last one. So I think <laughs> you're carrying around. Uh, this is this one, which is a thing. Oh, yeah. I should have cast identify. Oh, well. I mean, you, you're key, you can keep pace with these guys, but uh, this is definitely... Um, this is also conjuration magic, actually, much like the, the one that you retrieved before. Um, so yes, whatever this this larger than usual scroll case is over the strange head of this construct um, is probably your query. Um, they are, because these are constructs, they are not magical in and of themselves. They are metal constructs. Uh, I would assume for the moment you are keeping pace behind them um, and not necessarily like charge unless you want to charge in and smash. That's up to you. <laughs> what do you think in there, Ash? <laughs> Second time's a charm. Do it. If we need a distraction, I'm I'm on it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna cast Mage Hand again, and I'm gonna see if I can lift the bag right. off so you are getting within 30 feet because you have to do that to cast mage hand yes okay yes. hold on can I do this stealthily you can attempt I would say you can roll stealth with disadvantage because you are out uh, in the open okay that's fair that is totally fair all right <laughs> oh okay uh, the... um 
so as you are closing the gap um, to to uh, cast attempt to cast your spell and, and catch up with these things, um, three of them, the one at the front and two of the other ones in line, all stop and turn. And they look at you. Um, clearly they have noticed you. And there is a moment of they they stare at you and the smaller ones look back to the larger one. And there is some strange sounds. Um, I guess, Elena, you would almost compare this to the sound of gears grinding against each other or working. Um, you think that they are perhaps talking to each other, that this is in fact a language for them. Um, and they, uh, the three little, now the, they, they are, seem to be conversing, uh, and then the three little ones all turn and look back at you. Uh, and, uh, let me double check some things here. Yeah. Uh, actually all four of them turn and look at you, and they are watching you approach Ash and sort of waiting to see what happens when you get to them, if you continue to move or if you stop. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Throwing ball bearings as a distraction. Oh, let's see. <laughs> I can't decide what I should make you roll for that because they're pretty much watching you reach into your pocket and go. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I'm, again, I'm going to have to make you do this at disadvantage because they're literally all watching. I mean, what if I what if I start like moving up towards him a little faster? Would that distract them a little bit? Oh, uh, let's see. Twenty one. Two twenty ones. Nice. Wow. Um. Okay. Well, I'm gonna be fair about this. Let's see. There's a lot of them too. I got. <laughs> Uh, it this somehow works, and you see all four of their their well, they can't turn the the three little ones can't turn their heads. They are their heads, their faces are in their bodies, so they all turn ninety degrees, and they watch these ball bearings begin to scatter across this metal ground. Um, the larger one turns its head and watches the ball bearings roll, but as they sort of come to a stop because this is level ground, um. It sort of turns and looks back at you again, and it looks over at the ball bearings, and it it, it sort of um, it does attempt. It it sort of you hear the gear sounds again, like maybe it's trying to talk to you, um, but it is clear that you um, don't really understand it, and it turns completely away from you and begins to start walking again and as it does so the three little ones fall in line behind it so they're walking away from us they are continuing on the track that they were on okay because <laughs> yeah so, so i'm gonna cast mage hand and follow <laughs> behind maintain okay. 30 feet and try to to get the power <laughs> Seriously, you guys are going to have to stop. I, I'm going to keep walking along behind with you, so at least, you know. Okay. Yes, we're, we're close behind you watching out, but I don't, I don't I'm not stopping you. Okay, so you are following behind. You're going to cast Mage Hand again. Um, I love cantrips. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah. Um, well, let's see, because there's the bigger problem is uh, not so much the one, but making me roll all these things. Uh, unfortunately for you, <laughs> uh, as the mage hand passes the second one in line, uh, it 
the it stops and reacts like it it has seen the hands of the the, the three little cubes. The middle one perceives this thing, um, and as it does so, it makes a little clicking sound, and then you realize that they in fact all perceive it. Um, and uh, the three little ones turn towards you all and pull out their short bows, and uh, we're entering initiative. <laughs> Okay, um. so <laughs> real quickly, I have a rapier that gives us all advantage on initiative rolls. And I believe that Rocky has a similar weapon, no, so you don't I, get double advantage. Oh, you changed it? I, I did change it. Okay. I ended up with an X-ray vision ring. Okay, so there you go. You all get to roll advantage, initiative with advantage. So if you all go to your character sheets and... Roll your advantage twice. I'm not sure if it's going to show up in here or if I have to input the numbers. So uh, you may need to tell me. Nope, I can get it. Pull up the game log here. I have an 18. 18. 21. And. Um. Just when you get to roll a second time too, so I see oh. a fourteen. Did you roll again? Because you all get a you get advantage from a weapon that mm -hmm. uh, Ash has. Okay, I'll roll again then. Oh. <laughs> okay. Probably want that fourteen. I mean, you can have the seven if you want, but <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, you all are about twenty five feet away from these little uh, constructs, and uh, we're gonna have us a fight. <laughs> fight! 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 <laughs> Um, all right, so the, um, one, two, three, uh, the second, the third one, no, second one of the cubes, this is going to get a little confusing because there's three cubes, um, you see all three of the cubes sort of shift in a line in front of the larger one, sort of forming a barrier between you. Uh, the one in the middle, uh, is going to, they're still 25 feet out, they are not moving towards you actively. They are, it, it, it seems very clear that they are intent on guarding the one that has a thing. Uh, so this, the one in the mid, who will essentially be the key, the, the quadrone in the middle, uh, is going to shoot two arrows at uh, Ash, because he does not like that you have interfered with his purpose. Um, and that is a, that's a number, uh, 10 probably does not hit you. Miss. Okay. Uh, does a 15 hit you? Hits. Okay, so this is a short bow. It's 1d6 plus 2. Ooh, you take 7 points of piercing damage as this guy lets loose an arrow, uh, and it just sticks right in your, your arm. But you are up next. Uh, okay. Well... Not a fan of that. So <laughs> I am going to I'm gonna grab the 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 hilt of my cane and kind of like rub the the, the weird uh, crystal focus on the top. Mm -hmm. And I am going to cast chromatic orb at the the one that just shot me. Okay, the, with the cube in the middle. Got it. So. Go. Is that a... Um, do you make a roll, or does he have to make a save? Okay. You make a roll. Yeah. Okay. So, it's... Oh, come on. 14. Um... 10 plus... Two. Uh, that hits. Nope, sorry, it does not. It's a 16. I was looking at the wrong number. He, he That misses him. Okay. Uh, then... <laughs> <laughs> um, for my movement, I'm going to back up a little bit. And I know it's, it's not going to work, but I'm going to try to hide. <laughs> okay. Um, roll stealth with disadvantage? Yeah. <laughs> You keep trying to hide out in the open. You keep doing really well at it, though, so I'm like, okay. 
Like, they, they nerfed a lot. They missed a lot of perception checks. Eight. Okay, I mean, you're like, maybe I'm hidden. I, did you? Maybe you stepped partially behind Rocky. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> nobody can see me here. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the one on the left end of the line is going to take two uh, arrow shots, and I'm going to let the dice decide who gets to be the target of that. Um well, we'll see. Okay, so the first one is going to... Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. First one's going to go at Elena. Because now y'all are, like, interfering with what they're supposed to do. Um, does an... Uh, does a 12 hit you? Yes, I but I also have... Classes. Something you would like to use? No, I haven't used it. Let me see. Oh, I lost it. Sorry, still getting used to uh, running the D and D and Beyond. Yeah. Well, if you have questions, ask them. We will figure it yes. out. Yes. Okay. I have um, chain mail that is infused with magical strength. Okay. What does that do? <laughs> uh, it gives. Let's see. Spend a charge. So, oh, is this one of your artificial infusions that you would like to yes. get put in play? Yes. Okay. So I can, let's see. So the armor of magical strength, I can expend a charge to add my intelligence modifier to a strength check or a strength saving throw. Okay, that's not going to help your armor class, though. But it will if it hits. Oh, yes, it, it does, because I have a 16 when oh. I employ the... Uh, Oh, yes. I see. So then, yes, yeah, so this first one misses cool. you. Sorry. Uh, he's going to take a second shot at you. I have too many tabs open now, so I've lost all track. And all my dice rolls keep... Ooh, that is a 21 to hit. I'm hit. Yeah. That will be... Uh, eight points of piercing damage to you. So it finds a little niche in your armor. Uh, and then we have the other quadrone gets to go. Uh, and he's going to shoot at Jesswin, according to what the dice are telling me. <laughs> I keep using a d4 to decide this because I feel bad targeting people. Um, but I'm guessing a 7 does not hit Jesswin's armor class. Or a 9, rather. I can't do math. I don't really uh, know what that means. No, you're fine. Your armor class is a 14. So you're mm -hmm. wearing armor and this, this arrow bounces off your armor like nothing ever happened okay um he's gonna take a second shot at you which is uh still not gonna hit you because that's a 13 so uh you're nimble you're bouncing around uh and it is rocky's turn all right um i'm gonna go ahead and barbarian it up and move on towards i guess i'll move towards the middle one first Okay. Um, so move uh, within striking range. It's within five feet. So you're just going to move on up there. And yep. I'm going to go into a rage. Which okay. Which is going to activate my wild magic. Yep. All so right. you so you go ahead and roll. Here's my D8. There we go. A D8. Uh, so we have a wild surge barbarian here for those of you watching, which means whenever Rocky rages, he has to roll and something might happen. Well, something's going to happen. <laughs> a wild magic surge is going to happen. <laughs> All right. So an intangible spirit, which looks like a plump or picks, uh, so looks like a plump, appears within five feet of okay. the one with the magic item. Okay. Uh, that's within 30 feet of me. Um, yep. At the end of my current turn, the spirit explodes, and each creature within five feet must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 1d6 force. Okay. I can use that every turn until my rage As ends. a bonus action yep. at the end of your turns. Okay. okay. So you have raged, which is your bonus action this turn. Yes. So, but it um, does create it. This but it has created this thing. Uh, would you, I presume you would like to attack, though? <laughs> I would like to attack. I would like to use my ex, my attack slash extra attack. Yeah. So, let's Two see attacks per, per attack action. Yes. All right. Are you going for the big one, or are you going for the little ones first? Uh, well, the little ones are in the way at the moment, aren't they? I mean, 
yeah, they're they're medium creatures, so you would have to either move around all the way around them, or you can go through them. No, I'm a fan of through. Okay. Um, <laughs> Classic barbarian. <laughs> Why go around and go through? All right. So let's see. I rolled a nineteen plus six. Oh, 19 plus. Oh, yeah, that definitely yep. hits. All right, so 25. And 1, d 6. Each roll is not... Uh, wait, mall is 2d6. 2d6, yep. Um, oh, double 6. So 15. 15 points of damage. Okay, so you are going for the one in the middle? One in the, the middle. The little one in the middle? Yep. Uh, you absolutely just crack down on this thing. You put a giant dent. You see some little gears sprung out. You probably, like, bent one of its little wings, didn't even have a chance to take off. Uh, and this thing looks... It's still standing, but it does not look good. All right. And you have well, a second attack, right? again, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so that is eight, uh, 18. Uh, 18 hits. All right. And a six. There's a three and a five. Uh, a plus three. Eleven. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's gone. Um, this thing, you hit it a second time, and it crushes, what is left of it crushes inward. Uh, and there's a moment, and then a poof, and its whole body disintegrates into dust. And then the, um... The bow that was on its back just clatters to the metal ground and lays still. Um, so that is your your move. You still have some more movement, but you would potentially take attacks of opportunity. Um, so do you want to move, or is that the end of your turn? Um, no, I'll move on ahead towards okay, the so if main you, one. Basically, that would st you you would just be stepping in between the right. other two uh, so little ones. Okay, to totally fine. But you won't take the opportunity tax because they're all in proximity. So you're just standing in the middle of things now. Uh, so Elena, it is your turn. Uh, Rocky has run up there and absolutely oh, demolished. Before, oh. before Elena's turn, we got an exploding spirit. But it says it takes your bonus action to do that. No, at the end of your turn, the spirit explodes. Until your oh okay. Uh, okay, so you step in the middle. Everybody has to make a deck saving throw. What is the DC on that saving throw? Uh, Do we know? What is the DC? Hold on. Oh, your DC is 8 plus, plus your proficiency, proficiency bonus. So that's 11 plus your con modifier, which is 3. So that's a 14. Okay, so these guys, 14. They all need to make deck saving throws. Uh, that's a 13. Nope. Yeah, that's a 13. Uh, that's a 7. <laughs> and the other guy's got different stats. Uh, and a 9. So they all failed, because they rolled horribly. Take 1d6 force damage. So go ahead and roll a d6. Uh, it's 2. Okay. So... Uh, each of these guys takes two points of um, piercing damage, which I mean, kind of chips at them a little bit. It's not not too much of a big hit, so um, uh, yeah, force damage. So I sort of a wave. Two. Okay. Because I failed my throw, I rolled a ten. Oh, uh, each creature within five feet. Yeah, that's an important point. Luckily, none of the rest of you. <laughs> in there. Uh, something to bear in mind if any of you are planning to move up into combat you may not want to stand directly next to Rocky. <laughs> uh, okay, so that was Rocky's turn. Elena, it is your turn. Right. He has he has done some force damage on each of these three these two little guys that are left, one on either side of him and the big guy who's standing directly in front of Rocky. Yes, I'm going to move towards the one on his left. <laughs> Excuse me, and uh, draw my long sword. Mm. Can I, how far away am I? Can I move and strike at the same time, or? You are all about 30 feet, so you can close that gap. That will be about the extent of your movement, like you're going to be up there mm. in it, but you, you can certainly okay. do that. Then I will, I will move up. Okay. And attempt to stab, is that your yep. plan? Okay. And what do I roll for that again? I'm sorry. 
Well, you should have if you don't. Huh. It's not showing your weapon as being equipped because you should be able to push a button, but I'm not showing it as being equipped for you. Let me. So it's not showing up under your actions. Uh, you can go hold on. And click the check mark next. But mm -hmm. No, you don't even have a long sword in your inventory. <laughs> that is uh, you can add one to your inventory. Okay. Or maybe my character sheet is out of date. Let me refresh because no, I've got your sheet I do. Open. I do have one in my inventory and it is clicked. Okay. There it is. So now you can roll the plus one under the hit slash DC. Well, where is that? I'm sorry. Where is it? Oh, screen? so it says if you're under the actions in the middle of your screen, it has actions. And then um, if you go next to your longsword to the right of that, it says range five feet. And then it says hit slash DC plus one. Yay, learning D&D &D Beyond. <laughs> yeah, D&D &D Beyond. So. I swear my brain just is not working. Hold on. Um... Okay, so you have all your skills in a column sort of towards the middle of the page. Yes. Go to the right of where it says Wisdom, Insight, and it should say Longsword. Or you might need to refresh your um, character sheet if you okay. equip the Longsword. d and <laughs> Thanks for your patience. Uh, We're all learning yes, together. Yes, there it is. Okay. Okay, click on that plus one and it will roll your hit to hit. Okay. 16. 16. 16 hits. Uh, so go ahead and click the... Are you using your longsword with one hand or two hands? Probably two. You can choose to wield given it. My okay, then go ahead and size. click the 1D the one D 10 plus one. If you're wielding it two-handed, you get to do a little more damage because you get a little more force behind it. Okay. Or not. Damage. Wow, there you go. 11 damage on that guy on the left. So... He takes some hits, and he some gears go flying, and you kind of feel a little sad because you're like, oh, but it's a construct, and I'm an artificer, but also it's not my doing. It's not my creation, so ha, ha, ha. Uh, <laughs> And he definitely looks beat up. Uh, so you moved. That was your action. If you have a bonus action available that you would like to use, um, but I think your only bonus action would be to cast Healing Word. So you could, oh, uh, if, you, if anybody's taken couple of you have taken damage. It's up to you if you want to heal somebody now or not. Oh, I'm going to heal myself. Ash has got a hand in the air. <laughs> or you can heal yeah, yourself. Wait, Ash, how many? How bad are you? I'm seven down. I'm okay. okay. I'm, I'm eight down. <laughs> so you um, are casting this as a bonus action, uh, which means you can only cast it at first level because you're doing this as a little extra yes. thing. So if you go to your spells... And you go under first level and do cast, and then you can click the button that says 1d4 plus 3, and that will tell you how many hit points you get back. Four. And you get four hit points Wonderful. back. <laughs> um, okay, so that will be your turn. Jeswin, it is your turn. Um, I'll attack. You can leave these people here. Oh. <laughs> no. Um, I'll uh, use my arm blade dagger. Okay. And I'll guess I'll try to attack. <laughs> okay. So it attaches. This is a magic, a somewhat magic weapon that you picked out. Um, yeah. So are you? If you're it's because of the way this weapon works, it's attached to you. It's you can't throw it. So are you gonna run up there? Oh. next to somebody and fight or do you want to throw one of your other daggers that is not attached to your arm i will throw <laughs> one of my other daggers okay um uh so go ahead and uh you can hit that plus six next to one of your daggers 21 that is definitely a hit which one are you uh throwing this at the one that uh uh, Elena was fighting the one to the other side of Rocky. You probably can't target the one that is the big one that is... Well, actually, it's a large creature, so you could. You could go for the big one as well. It's up to you. I will go for the and one. And that will hit any one of them. So Okay. 
I will hit whichever one is the lowest <laughs> or the weakest. Right, and I also need to remind you about sneak attack because uh, I never play rogues. So you are also going to do some additional damage. Mm -hmm. Because they're engaged with Rocky. Yes, because they are all engaged with Rocky. Anybody. So you're you going to also scroll down on your sheet and there's under other, under attacks, it says other and then it says attack and then it has sneak attack. Mm -hmm. Click on that 3d6 because you're going to do uh, that damage plus you're going to do the 1d4 plus 3. You're going to do lots of damage here. Okay, I rolled a 7. Okay. For the 3d6? Yes. Okay, and then also scroll back up and click on the 1d4 plus 3. So that's going to be 7. The dagger. Oh, gotcha. Yep. Um, 7. Okay, so that's 14. And you were targeting the one that was the most hurt, you said? Yes. Okay, so that one is gone. Yay! Uh, your dagger lands in this construct and it stops for a moment. And there's a sound of, like, gears winding down, and then it just goes, and it also disintegrates in a cloud of dust. Uh, so that guy is gone. Um, you may also have some bonus actions, because rogues have lots of things. Um, so as a bonus action, so you've run, you threw this, so you did not run up into combat. Um, you have a couple, you, you could dash if you wanted to. You could hide, but I don't really think you can hide out in the open. <laughs> Um, let's see. And you already used your sneak attack. So the only thing you could do is basically dash if you wanted to run somewhere or maybe attempt to hide. <laughs> if you felt like you wanted to. But you don't have to do either of those things. That's I will just, just stay just, where I am. Show. Got it. Uh, it is the big guy's turn. Um, and, uh, let me get to the right character sheet here. And you have just walked up in its face, Rocky. Uh, so I think it is going to be uh, the target of your attack. Um, the thing about this thing is it has five arms, so it also gets to take five attacks. <laughs> um, so he is plus four to hit with his arms. Um, but I'm guessing a nine does not hit you. No, I'm 13. <laughs> I'm rolling awful, but anybody who knows me that this is the case. That's an 18. So that is the hit? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what does this guy do? 1d6 plus 2. Whoops. Uh, that's going to be 7 points of bludgeoning damage, if uh, it makes, which yes, would make a difference does. to you because you're going to have that half. damage. Yeah, I cut yep. it in half at the rate. So I yep, so you're going to have that. Uh, that's another nine, so that's not going to hit you. Swing and a miss. Uh, let's see. Remind me, a DM question. If I cut it in half, do I round down or up? Down. Okay. So three and on the one that hit. That's a, a 12. That's not going to hit. One more attack. He's not good at this. Uh, 19. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> okay. So he's going to hit on that one. Uh, but again, you get to have this damage. Oh, and that's a two. So you take uh, four points of bludgeoning damage, cut down to two. Uh, and that is what he gets to do. And we are back to, nope, that is a deceased quadron that no longer exists. Ash, it is your turn. So how many are left? There's the big guy. You have the big guy, and you have the quadron to the right of Rocky. Uh, and he's engaged, right, with... Yes. Okay. Because you also have rogue powers activate. Yeah. <laughs> so seeing that that my my uh, last attack didn't work so well, uh, Ash is gonna curse underneath his breath and reach in and grab his short bow and aim for the uh, the smaller of the two. Okay. Um, and he's actually gonna back up a little bit more. Yeah, because the range is okay. the range is it's it's outside of five feet on a on a ranged weapon. As long as you're not within five feet, okay. you are not taking disadvantage. So you want the short, the, you want to be within and you want to be within the short. Yeah, so okay. your your inside range okay, I, is okay. You want to be within eighty feet. Okay, really. and that's you're already within thirty feet, but you are not close enough that you have to worry about rolling with disadvantage. Okay, all right. So and you will get your sneak attack damage. If, with your rogue levels that you have. If it hits. If it hits. 19. 19 hits. 
Okay. So, so roll that damage of all sorts. <laughs> that's going to be six piercing damage. And okay. And <laughs> so eight total. Um, he's now got an arrow sticking out of him. <laughs> Uh, he, he's looking a little more beat up, but he is, he's still in pretty good shape. Um, anything else you want to do? Or have, have options to do? You, you also don't have a whole lot. Um, you could, you know, if you wanted to retreat, but I don't think you need to do that. You can dash, you can disengage. You could attempt to hide again, but... be on brand and I'm just gonna hide again okay go ahead and roll roll stealth with disadvantage as you attempt to hide out in the open I love it <laughs> 12 okay so maybe you're hidden maybe you're not you're st you're standing here out in the open uh, that quadrone is down uh, the one who is still standing uh, is upset that you targeted it, but it also is acutely aware of Rocky standing directly next to it, trying to interfere with its boss and its mission. Um, so, uh, this is the wrong one. Uh, he is going to attempt to punch you with his tiny metal fists twice, Rocky. <laughs> uh, and that is a 20. So that's going to hit. Um, yeah, but, like, seriously. Um, he does five points of bludgeoning damage, rounded, cut in half and ha rounded down for you. So two points of bludgeoning damage. Ow. You don't even feel this. You're like, what's happening? <laughs> uh, and then he rolled a six to hit. So no. <laughs> he, does, he does not hit you. <laughs> um, and he is not going to move. It is his turn. Uh, it is that was his turn, so Rocky, it is to you. And you've got the one big guy in front of you and the little guy on your right who you think maybe just tried to punch you, but it kind of also could have just been a fly. You're not really sure. <laughs> I'm going to be single-minded and head for that big boss. Okay. So I'm going to attack with my maul. Uh, 20? 20 okay. hits, yes. And yep. seven damage. Okay. And my extra attack. Yep. Twenty-two to hit. And yep. Eleven damage. Ooh. Okay. He is looking pretty rough. He is still standing. Um, but you have you have damaged at least two of his arms that seem to be sort of hanging limply to the side and not really uh, doing their whirly attacks that they were trying to do on you before. Mm -hmm. uh, but he is still standing. All right. Before my turn ends, I'm also going to take my bonus action and create Let's my try little and blow him up. <laughs> uh, and okay. then I'm not moving. So and when we... my turn ends, it explodes. So, okay. dexterity saving throw. We said. He actually rolled a, a a 19 on that dexterity saving throw. He got that he's finally rolled something decent. Yeah. So, so he doesn't take any damage. I don't think it's half. They either take it or they don't. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so he is, he is trying to cling to life because, ouch, ouch, that hurt. Um, Elena, it is your turn. Okay, uh, can I... There is a somewhat damaged little metal cube with wings, and then there is a somewhat damaged big guy with lots of arms in front of Rocky. <laughs> I think I'm going to go for the big guy. Mm -hmm. And attack. Okay. Long sword. 
Um, so the ones that were around, the other one was that were in front of you exploded, so you can step in on Rocky's left side if you want to engage with this thing, because you have to step in to, to, if you're going to hit it with your longsword. Yes. If you want to do something else, you may not have to. Yes, no, I will uh, step in uh, closer okay. to Rocky on his left and attack. Okay. Go ahead and roll that, t that, that hit. Oh, that was your oh, damage. that was my damage. You... Yep, 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 yep. Yep. Got roll. <laughs> Gotta do stuff. Initiative, right? Yes. Uh, no, next to the longsword where it has that plus one, one under hit DC. I'll get it next time, I swear. Oof. Uh, you did not hit <laughs> did him, not though. At all. <laughs> <laughs> you took a swing. It scrapes off of the side oh, of this pentadrone. Rough. Um, Tink. And that is your action. Yep. Um, you can move, although if you move, he's probably going to swing at you. Uh, and you have your bonus action if you would yes. like Yes, does anyone, to do anyone need a heal? Nope. So I mean, I'm down. Uh, I'm not down in any danger at the moment. So if anybody else has less hit points, I can pretty much just take I, I'm only down four. Anybody want assistance? I mean, I'm down seven, but... Okay, uh, I heal. I heal Ash. Okay, so use another one of those first level healing words. Uh, and then <clears throat> you can go ahead and tell Ash how much you want to heal him for. Well, the dice are How much I want you, to but... heal him for, yes. Yep. <laughs> can I do that? Oh my gosh. Eventually, I'll get this all sorted out. So I go into... If you go to the spells, the, the spells tab, the second one over, and... Yep, you can click on that 1d4 plus 3. You've actually used two of your first level spell slots, but that's okay. We'll mark those off later. You probably won't go through all of them. I just accidentally clicked one of them, so killing it. That's fine. Uh, but five... You've used two of them, so... Get five back. Yay. To Ash. My page it's a repayment for putting up with me figuring out there this go. site. Okay, so uh, that is Elena's mm -hmm. turn, uh, unless you want to run away and take some attacks of opportunity, which I'm guessing you maybe don't. I don't know. No, I'll just stick around. It's up to you. Okay, Jeswin, it is your turn. Okay. There's one beaten up little cube and one beaten up big guy that both uh, Rocky and Elena are trying to chip away at. Okay, I will target the big guy. Um, I will throw my second dagger okay at him go for it okay i rolled a two <laughs> well an eight plus six okay eight an eight does not hit <laughs> <laughs> um so that's your action you have uh 30 feet of movement if you want to take it and you also could actually dash so you could move up 60 feet if you wanted to but you don't have to do anything Um, two, two weapon fighting. Yes, you can throw uh, another dagger. Okay. I think you have one more. No, I, you're out of daggers though. You've thrown your daggers I threw and two. they do not reappear. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well the voice from the ether has decided that you can throw another dagger if you would like to. Sounds good, I will. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna roll for the arm blade. I don't know if that's like meta DMing or like when our producer has <laughs> <laughs> injected herself into the game. I rolled a 15. Uh, 15 still does not hit, unfortunately. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so that's your turn. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the big guy's turn. Um, he is pretty hurt, so he's desperate times call for desperate measures, and there are now two of you in front of him. Um, Elena and Rocky, if you can each roll a constitution saving throw. Oh. Crit fail again. <laughs> yep, crit fail. Oh, oh that hurt. <laughs> Am I dead? Uh, as the two, the t 
two, no, you're not dead. As the two of you are standing up in the face of this very strange construct, uh, its jaws unhinge and a cloud of gas emerges from it. Rocky, you completely brush this off. It sort of wafts over you. you you're in your rage. You, you don't even really realize what is going on. Uh, Elena, <laughs> you are paralyzed. Sweet. You cannot I, move. Mm. You cannot take actions. You cannot take reactions. You are standing to Rocky's left, frozen solid. Uh, and we will address what you might be able to do on your next turn. <laughs> um, but that is its entire action. It is trying to defend itself. Uh, Ash, it is your turn. Okay. You all saw this gas cloud come out. Rocky seems fine. Um, Elena stopped moving, but it's all happening so quickly you may not have even figured that out yet. All right, uh, well, I'm going to uh, attack the small guy again, see if we can get rid of him. Okay. So... Thirteen? Thirteen does not hit. Ooh, okay. Um, question. I never yes. actually got rid of my mage hand. Okay. Um, it does take your action to control the hand, so I would say no. I'm like, mm, yeah. Because you just used your action to attack. Right? You... Yes, I will, I will let you do that. But I will, I, I'm not going to let you, yeah, I don't think he could actually try to do uh, something. Uh, okay. <laughs> Getting closer. Uh, uh, would, th would that count as my bonus action then? Yeah. Okay. Essentially, I give you that as, as a... Darn it, no <laughs> hiding this time. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they haven't really been targeting you because you're kind of hanging back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the quadrone that is remaining is going to go ahead and try and punch you again, Rocky, a couple of times. He's... I, he's trying to defend his boss, uh, but uh, I, I know that a oops, that's the wrong one. Uh, a sixteen does not hit you, correct? Uh, no, sixteen will hit. Oh, okay. I'm only thirteen. Well, okay. Well, um, ooh, he does a whole um, six points, three points of of bludgeoning, piercing or bludgeoning damage rounded down. So you take three more points. Of, another fly has like swatted at you. You're not really sure. Um, and then his second punch misses. So, uh, and that is his turn. And Rocky, it is your turn. All right. Let's try and take out that boss once and for all. So, what do we got? We got 23 to hit. And nine damage. Uh, nine damage. Thing. He is still standing. Okay, second attack. Sixteen to hit. Sixteen hits. Nine again. Oh yeah, he is he is gone. Uh, this one also explodes in a cloud of dust. Um, and the uh, case drops to the ground. Um, and then, Rocky, at the end of your turn, uh, I need to roll a saving... Uh, I'm assuming you're going to try and explode the one that's left. Uh, no, I'm not going to try and explode. I don't oh. want to do anything to my poor paralyzed companion if I can help. Oh, that is also true. So you're going to stop there. Yes. Um, I am finishing my turn. I'm not going to try and move away. Okay, Elena, it is your turn. And I know we have a player with a hard stop at 9.30, so I want to give them their turn, and then I have an exit strategy for them. So... <laughs> Well, I'm frozen, so I'm going to stand here. <laughs> that is true. At the end of your turn, you may make another constitution saving throw. Great. Ten. You are still paralyzed. Sweet. <laughs> uh, Jeswin, it is your turn. Okay. Um, can I... 
Hmm. You've thrown all your daggers. You could run up there and grab them and stab again. Okay. <laughs> or okay, stab I will... them if you would like. Or you can... Yeah, that's kind of where you're at. Okay, I also have a rapier. Yes. So with the rapier in hand, I will dash. Is, yeah, I will run up. Um, you don't even need to dash. You're it. just going to... You've got 30 feet. So okay. you can just run up there and stab. I will run up there and stab it. And Go attempt it. to obtain my weapons. <laughs> got it. I don't have a roll. Did you roll to attack? Uh, yeah, 17. Okay. Uh, 17 hits. Yay! And you will have sneak attack damage again, so you're going to roll that 1d8 plus 3 plus the 3d6. Gotcha. So I rolled a 5, and then for my sneak attack, I rolled a 9. Okay, you stab at this thing with your rapier, and it explodes in a cloud of dust. Um, strangely enough, just as that is happening, there is a flash of light for all of you, and Jeswin disappears, and you hear Nezra's voice say, Need her for another job! She'll be fine! You'll be fine! We'll take a pause there, because I know that Jen has to leave us. Um, so thank you, Jen, for playing. We're thank getting close you. to wrapping up, so you will be able to see how the adventure ends. Thank um, you. But <laughs> I had a great first time playing, so thank you, everybody. Yay! <laughs> Bye! So you all have defeated all of these uh, little mechanical creatures. The, um, the item that you are seeking is now laying on the ground, uh, surrounded by several um, uh, piles of dust. Uh, Jeswin, or not Jeswin, um, Elena is still standing there, not moving, uh, and will be for an additional eight rounds. You are paralyzed for one minute. Uh, technically, we're not in combat, but if you... So I would... Technically, every round, you can roll a constitution check. So you can either wait out the next 40 seconds, or you can keep rolling if you would like to. Uh, my rolling hasn't been great, but it might be really funny to see what happens. <laughs> I'll, I'll roll okay, at least once, see what, see what goes on. Okay. While she's, you know... Nine. Paralyzed. Frozen, still I'm gonna paralyzed. wave in front of her, just kind of make funny faces, and then sit down and cast identify on the two Kay. magical objects: the one that we got last time and the one we just. Got. Uh, as um, as Ash is doing that, this would be another round. So go ahead and roll another uh, another Constitution check. Okay. Somewhere in here, I'm going to pick up the leftover daggers from Jesuit. Yes. And, yes. Um, hand them to our. Uh, rogue, who might find okay. useful. <laughs> include that, include uh, one that of those is kind of special, so she's yeah. probably going to want it back. Um, <laughs> while you're discussing that um, and identifying these materials, so as you identify uh, these, these the two items that you, all two items, or now you have three more, because this was your fourth item. Wait, no, um, one, two, three, right? This is three. You have the finger... The Which you, you have the identified. Yep. You have the, the portrait, one... no. and now you have yeah, yeah. The, the brooch. Or yeah, whatever. the brooch. The, yeah, and then this and one. Then... That's three. Yeah. That's right. It. Okay. I lost track. Uh, too many numbers, and I clicked on the wrong things. Okay. Uh, so this uh the my cat is misbehaving. Uh, the the brooch uh is a. Now I gotta get to my notes because I forgot what it is. Um, you you believe that this um, strangely enough this very small brooch uh, will function as something called a cape of the mountebank. Uh, essentially, while wearing it, you can cast Dimension Door as an action, uh, and you can only use it once per day, though. So um, that is uh, the the functionality or the the mechanics of that particular item. And the, um, the tube that you know have, uh, is, is, do you open it? Are you taking out what's in there or are you just, because right now it's just a tube and well, there's something in it. So in order to cast identify, is it, would I have to open it? Um, I guess you don't have to. It might be more, <laughs> more 
are more exciting, but no. I, I mean, I'd, I'd like to identify it first and okay, then that's open fine. it. Um, so you are, it's a little confusing because you understand magic. Um, but what, what you, um, so what, what your, your intuitive skill is telling you is in there does not make any sense for what it is. Um, but the magic that is coming out of this spell or out of this, this oversized scroll case, um, is the equivalent of, uh, Qual's feather token. So whatever is in this scroll, which you have not, this case, which you have not opened, um, you believe if you took it out might turn into some sort of strange boat but you're not entirely sure what kind unless you you, there are some clues if you actually look at the item which you have chosen not to do so i'm not going to give you all of it um elena go ahead and roll because we've had another round or so here go ahead and (laughs) roll again (laughs) this will be number five for you well peace cast identifies congratulations you are no longer paralyzed you snap out of it five rounds sooner than you would have <laughs> awesome okay yep uh fantastic moving around oh uh, did i have awareness i was just paralyzed but i was still aware of what was going yeah, on you were okay. just um you just had the condition of being paralyzed which basically means you can't move or speak and you automatically fail certain saving throws had they come up um or any hit against you would have been critical had it come up but we didn't make it to that point you were just frozen in place for a good 30 seconds there so, <laughs> once she's unfrozen, yes, and uh, I've finished that, I will actually open up the scroll, and I'll actually hand the the case to Alina. Okay. Okay. Have the case. Uh, so he gives you this case um, that is like a scroll case, but it's bigger and mm-hmm. longer. Um, and what he it pulls out a, a basically a roll of papers. Um, y- you're really intrigued by this too, Elena, because these seem to be plans for something. Um, essentially like some sort of like plans for and and um, you put together what you know so Ash thinks that there is some sort of magic on this that would produce a boat from these pieces of paper which is very strange you look at these pieces of paper and from what you can tell they appear to be plans for some sort of underwater boat something that would travel under the water but would be watertight so that you could be in it under the water. Fascinating. Could I learn more by rolling Arcana or would that help me at all? Or investigation? Um, you can. We'll see how you roll. Uh, which, which one? <laughs> um, go ahead and roll uh, investigation because this is more of the plans themselves come from, as far as you know, another world in, or another reality that's very confusing and you're one you're not familiar uh, with. Twelve. It's not necessarily magic. Um, Yeah, I mean, you don't really know. Like, this is real hard to read because it's not anything you've ever seen before or a concept that you understand. Um, I don't know. Maybe Lord River Gleam could tell you more about it because it came from his collection. Maybe he understands the context for this. But you understand that it is a boat, but you do not understand how this would work. I would like to look and see if there's anything, like, hidden, any, like, I don't know, hidden glyphs any clues invisible ink um so you now that you're looking at this you, like i said you you understand the mechanics of this is the equivalent of a qual's feather token and the way that works is when you touch it to a body of water it does something so you wonder perhaps if you were to touch these plans to a body of water would they become the thing that they depict who knows Maybe. Nobody's water around here. <laughs> I will tell them what I what I know about the parchment. Okay. But I'm not going to tell them anything about the... What do you uh, think it does? The brooch. Okay. No. Oh, I'm you're gonna... not going to tell them about the brooch. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so... The three of you are standing here. You, you're you a little confused about everything because you, you it never occurred to you or you weren't really aware of Nezra having the ability to sort of snatch somebody away. But if she says she's got a job that she needs Jeswin for, she's probably, she's usually on the up and up, so it's probably on the level. Um, but yeah, you find yourselves here standing on the plane of Mechanus in the cloud of 
little clouds of dust and some uh, three bows on the ground. Um, and the uh, amulet has gone back to uh, its sort of neutral temperature. You I'm have gonna, collected another item. I'm going to grab the bows as we're, we're here. Okay. Is There's nothing else since everything's dust. Yep, they just turn to dust. They disintegrate when they are destroyed. I'm very disappointed by this. Just, just so you know. <laughs> no parts nope. to keep. So Maybe I'm gonna we look at. Take a quick short rest before we uh, move on to the next plane. I feel like we're a little bit damaged. <laughs> okay. Um, I will tell you we are at the point where our adventure is winding down. So if you uh, if you concentrate on the amulet, it's probably gonna take you home. <laughs> But, but that's up to you. I will leave. You can take a short rest if you want to do that because you don't know that. That's me as a DM <laughs> metagaming a little. So if you wish to take a short rest uh, in the open plane here of Mechanus, you can do There's nothing around. You'll see it coming. <laughs> I was about to ask if we wanted to try to go home or onwards. Lord Rivergleam told you that this amulet would probably bring you, bring you back eventually, and you could check in with him at that point. So we don't really have much control as far as we know. It's true, you don't have much control as you know. If only there were an omnipotent, an omnipotent DM that knew what was going on. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm just going to go ahead and think about the Lord's home okay. Think really hard this time since it didn't seem okay. to work the last time <laughs> um, go ahead and roll a d8 I just I have to ask you like I know what's gonna I, I just curiosity is too much like what are the odds that it <laughs> uh, it was a six okay that was a repeat so let's say for the sake of argument there is a flash of light, um, and it is not, again, and you find yourselves appearing once again in the, um, the Gallery of Gizmos. Um, it looks the same as when you left it. Your Lord River Gleam is not currently in the room. You're not sure how long you've been gone. Um, but it only takes a matter of moments before the, the doors come open, and he rushes into the room, and he takes a pretty quick measure of things and he says there's only four or there's only three of you did did you lose one no our boss kind of borrowed her she's she's he rolls fine. his eyes and he goes nezra whatever did you find them any of them we found a couple <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, he is very excitedly, like, holding his hands out, clearly wants his, his stuff back, which has been the intention all along. And I will hand over, well, actually, uh, go ahead the... I'll go over and hand, go ahead and hand over the thumb coin. I'm Rocky had really the thumb and the coin. Yeah. <laughs> Pun intended, you're not attached to it. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I'll hand over the parchment, unless, uh, Okay. Uh, and he, if you, do you, uh, Elena, do you still have the, the case for the drawings? I do, I will hand it over. Okay, he very rapidly puts them back in it. Um, so you've given him two things. Are you, uh, are you intentionally withholding something? Because he, he doesn't know, I, I mean, uh, well, that's my question. You've given him two things. He is very excited about those. He takes them and you see him rush to uh, put them back where they belong on their pedestals. And he says, um, you were gone a while. I was, I was hoping there'd be more. Was it just the two? <laughs> Apparently nobody's saying anything. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not going to out my my party okay. uh, but and I don't I couldn't prove that we had it anyways so I'm just gonna yeah that's do fine do. um he he looks a little crestfallen he says well I, I suppose we didn't discuss the matter of payment and then there's the fact that and he looks around at the empty pedestals that there are still pieces missing um 
you've been more successful than I have if you want to go but I mean obviously you might want to rest you, you don't you don't look so great uh, <laughs> but if you want to go back out there there's you know I can make it worth your while I really do want my collection back it shouldn't it shouldn't be out there uh, um, I'd be interested in going uh, th we stopped at another place and I uh, I can't seem to find that we couldn't seem to find that third artifact um go ahead ash and roll a deception check because you he's he's pretty fixated like these are his things there's probably something he can do to figure out if he thinks you're holding uh, oh! <laughs> um that's a four uh oh it's a four um he gives you a long hard look um he is let me let me do something here let me be fair about this. Um, he gives you a very long look, and he, he says, um, well, I would certainly appreciate the help if you want to continue on this path. I want, I want everything back, and I think there's more to this story. Um, and he ah. looks at you again, and he, he's looking at you specifically, Ash, and he says, these items, they have become dangerous things. They need to... They shouldn't be out in the world. So Ash will make but a that's what big, he says. big show of looking for mm -hmm. it, and he'll like pull out the the planar amulet and kind of like and look through his and feel around. It's a big show, and then find the the brooch. Okay. Um. He takes it from you, and he says, "I promise you, it's for the best." Um. But he looks at the amulet and he says, hold on to that if you're willing to, you know, go back out on the job. He says, I've got some rooms upstairs if you don't have a place to stay, you want to take a rest or whatever. But if you're interested in finishing the job. Um, he also, at this point, will hand a pouch to uh, each of you. And then he has one extra one. Uh, and he says, I don't I guess hopefully your fourth one will show up again for the job to finish it. Um and he has given you each let me think what was the math I was going to do on this each pouch contains 100 gold pieces whether you tell Jeswin about this is up to you you could have all just gotten a lot richer um, but he hands it to you all and he says I'm hoping you'll consider this a down payment on finishing the job I, like he's trying to keep you lured in like he's paying you for this part of the job but he's also hoping that you will finish the job in the future we maybe try and get a little bit more information out of him about the odd ways that the items made people act. Um, the reaction and the wind in the elemental palace and the. Uh, do you um, do you tell? Are you telling him your adventure because he doesn't know what happened to you? So are you are you telling I'll him just, essentially? I, I will just. Maybe ask. It seemed like some of these per affected people we saw a bit oddly. Is there something you're not telling us about these artifacts that we should know if we're going to go after more? He says, well, I mean, uh, they aren't from here. So the fact that they took on the magic of this place to begin with is strange enough. It wouldn't surprise me if it's like, affected people in different ways normally you know this is my my collection it's not like they go out into the world and attune themselves to people it's i guess it's possible he says if you're going to keep doing this job i mean there are unanswered questions about who did this and and why insight um, check yeah <laughs> uh go ahead and roll an insight check 17 okay um Um, you rolled a 17. You don't think he's lying. Um, you know that he is intense about his collection, but you, you think that he still has a lot to learn about how the things that happened happened. He says people, there are people out there who would, would want a collection like this. Um, any of these items. 
he says, um, there's this, I mean, it's going to sound wild, but I mean, Holmes had a nemesis. Maybe I do too. Who wouldn't want some of this stuff? Um, he says, look, just go get some rest, heal up a little bit, come back, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Uh, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we are going to end our adventure. Uh, as you may have noticed, <laughs> there is a definite possibility of a part part two here. Uh, I do, in fact, have a little more of this, this uh, storyline and this adventure sketched out that may touch on some more of our uh, Holmesian adventures. So, um, thanks for sticking it out. We know this ran long, as we often do. A um, couple things about the role of play. If you are interested in joining us in uh, play test games or in games on the stream and you are part of the Virginia Tech community or the Blacksburg Christiansburg community, we encourage you to reach out to us. Uh, we should have a link in the chat and email address from our lovely mods uh, to convey that information about how you can contact us. Uh, I will mention that uh, next Wednesday and every Wednesday, uh, we have Archival Adventures on this channel, which is a dive, a deep dive into materials from special collections and university archives. Um, and it's a chance to learn about them and talk about them in chat. Uh, next Thursday, if I remember correctly, and I'm sure producer Alice will correct me if I'm wrong, we have an episode of Roll Call where we will be talking about a uh, previous one shot. My guess is it's the open boat uh, because we played that game back at the end of January. So some people who played in that game will be uh, joining our host to talk about uh, what that adventure was like and how it related to the literature and how it didn't. Um, and then stay tuned. There will be a future future episodes of Roll of Play. Uh, there will maybe be a second part to this adventure later in the semester. Um, and some other stuff coming up, but I don't have it off the top of my head. So check us out. Come back and check out what we're doing. Um, and uh, thanks for joining us. Are we, are, I've lost our, our producer has turned off her camera, so I'm not sure if we're raiding anywhere or not. Um, sometimes we go raid, sometimes we don't. Uh, Woohoo roll call in the chat. So that is our oftentimes roll call host, uh, Kayla, in the chat. So come watch roll call. Uh, thank you all for playing this. Uh, for those of you uh, playing in this game and those of you watching, this is actually only my second time running a 5e game, so I appreciate your following my bumbling along as we all learned how to do this together uh, in a fun way. <laughs> okay, uh, producer Alice says we are going to be raiding queue time, so if you stick around, we will jump over there. They're probably doing something gaming related, I don't know, but they are playing Pathfinder, so if you have not had enough uh, RPG for the evening, you can catch some Pathfinder on queue times and come back and visit us here on uh, BTUL Studios Twitch channel in the future. Vamp! Vamp! That's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Just gonna keep dancing then. <laughs>